Hey yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the road podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I am one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never here. Yo, what up? We got DJ D Miles. What's good? We got Jamie the Great. Yeah. And yo, we got a special guest. It's like a real pleasure to have him here. Pause. Like uh, I had a, I had a, so like Rhino reopened like earlier this year. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, by yeah, the yeah, way, yeah. you said you wasn't going to the Rhino. No he more. had to go support for I the reopening. had to reopening. go to the reopening after the yeah. pandemic. Yeah. You know what I'm he saying? He didn't even go show face. He was one of the ambassadors. <laughs> so there. I was, I was at Rhino. At the, we were all there, weren't yes. we? Yeah. yeah. So we had to be there. <laughs> <laughs> we were all masked up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was there. We was drinking a little bit. It was the 420 party, right? I think it was. Yeah. And yeah. I had, and I, you know, I met this individual, this guest that we have on. And we, you know, like, it's funny because after the pandemic, all the conversations were super deep. Like, even, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. even, even with some of the dancers, yeah. right? <laughs> we were, like, arguing about shit, you know? We were arguing, like, is the, this isn't real, you know? This yeah. is, like, a flu. And I was just like, you know, I'm... I'm having like political <laughs> conversations with like Navig- dancers, you yeah, know. Yeah, what I'm navigating saying? through them. Yeah, but but anyway, we I had a deep conversation with this guest. You know, uh-huh. we was talking about relationships, like like lifestyle and health and mm-hmm. all, all of these things. And I was like, "Yo, I gotta get this motherfucker on the podcast." You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. And it just so happens this motherfucker moved to Las Vegas. Nice. All right. You know, so a lot of uh, he's famously known for for DJing, being a Wiz Khalifa's DJ. Mm-hmm. He's a veteran radio DJ. Um, he's Pittsburgh finest, mm-hmm. and now he resides in Las Vegas. Mm. And then let's welcome uh, DJ Bonix. Yes, What's yes. good, man? Yeah, 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 yeah. What's good, fam? I appreciate you. You, you were just talking about it uh, when you talked about brought up Rhino. I forgot yeah. about like the whole like what had happened the year before, yeah. and everyone was trying to be like not awkward, in, like talking to people in a yeah, club. Yeah. It was like the first time being like. Hey, what's up? We're out here. It was it was awkward, but it was also like we were just so happy to see people. Yeah, Yeah, man. I forgot about that night. Remember? It was remember now. Yeah, (laughs) I feel like that was the first time a lot of people had just seen people out in public. So I was just as happy to see you guys and the strippers. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. I remember D was super comfortable. He didn't have a mask on. He was just walking around. (laughs) Really, (laughs) really. You're like, hey, yo, I haven't seen you in a while. What's up? Kissing motherfuckers. (laughs) (laughs) Going in the back room. Me and me me and was like, hold him. Yeah. You got a mask. We gotta record tomorrow. <laughs> what is he thinking? Oh, fuck was he doing? He's crazy. was like, "You real comfortable? Aren't you? you ain't got your fucking." Mask and then weeks on. later, this motherfucker catches it. <laughs> Just, uh, was it? Did you get it? A week? A couple weeks later? Hell no! I got it like months later. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Jesus, D. But every week he'd hit us and be like, "I can't really taste nothing." Yeah, like, right. And be like, "No, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I taste the shit." Allergies. Yeah. Like allergies. He <laughs> keep blaming the allergies. So you in Vegas now? Yeah. Yeah, I've been, uh, yeah. Quietly, I guess. Not really though. Uh, I had a weird year. I think everyone had a weird year. Yeah. And, uh, it's long- an understatement for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be honest, and without to go into too much detail, like I moved to Austin, Texas earlier this year. And so uh, I thought that was it. You know, God plans. What did they say? You plan, God laughs. And so I, I that didn't work out. I ended up going to Philly for the summer and just trying to regroup myself because mm-hmm. it definitely was like a tough time. And... Um, Damn, so you move, move, like... Yeah, you yeah, got yeah no, I had to... You was on tour, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just telling you, in, in this year alone, yeah, yeah. I've driven from Minnesota to Austin, because I was living in Minnesota the last four right. years, uh-huh. mm-hmm. uh, which was crazy, like George Floyd, all that last year. Amazing right. experience, though, in Minneapolis. You were there the whole time? Yeah, I was, like, George Floyd happened just maybe, like, a few blocks. Like, my, oh, wow. my bank yeah. caught all, you know, that my bank was gone, Wells Fargo... I mean, I saw it. It was crazy. The police, unreal, like Holy every day. Shit. Yeah, I was on lockdown Damn, for that. Man. But I was on the radio, and so since there was no DJing, and I was on the radio, I was like able to air people's voices and shit on mm. the, you know, like, hey, how do you feel about what's happening? And right. so that was cool because, like, you know, radio doesn't do shit like that anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, so for, but I was on an independent station, so for me, be able to tap into the community and ask them, but just being there for that whole shit, like. Watching from Mini- South Minneapolis and then seeing like George Floyd murals in the Middle East, and it was right. just like this shit mm-hmm. happened right here. Um, so that was pretty scary. But so I left Minnesota, tried out Texas for a little bit. Shout out to the family down there that made it us welcome, like Buck Rogers and and those. Cats. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Really a lot good of good people out there. Oh yeah. man, crazy CRG. All so many. Yeah. Uh, um, and then I had been wor- working for this uh, dispensary called Hardeen. And I've been an ambassador for them. So they were actually like, you know, I had a relationship where I was posting stuff on Instagram. And yeah, yeah. every time I come to do a show with Wiz or if I was DJing here, 
uh, I just had started this great relationship with the owner, and because he's from Pittsburgh, right? Yeah, he's from Adam. Pittsburgh. Actually, yeah. Adam is from ah, there yeah. originally. So, I mean, at the end of the summer, I didn't know what was going to happen because I'll be truthful. And maybe this is for later podcasts. Like, I'm trying to figure out what's not life after DJing, but like, what can I do while figuring out what I want to do with DJing. Like I've been DJing for like 24 years or something, mm-hmm. and it's just like kind of like I don't want to have to, but like I still love it, so I don't want to say no to it. And so I actually and, actually wanted to address that question with you. We we can go yeah, there because Hardeen there. is actually a good step for me because because of that relationship, they were like, hey, we're looking for someone to oversee some of our brand ambassadors. So right now I work with like Envy, Who Kid, Infamous, Ace, um, and you know some other guys at Biscuit, who's uh, you know social media guy. It's mm-hmm. Biscuit guy, and like man, now a, a person in my position gets to like empower other DJs. You know, through right. whether it's that and helping them, w- and the weed industry so new is right. like, yeah, it, this is an amazing space, and I don't have to force myself to do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday DJing, which I love. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. So I looked at it as like, <clears throat> I built a nice little trifecta for me here. You ready? I DJ. Yeah. I live in Vegas. Mm-hmm. I DJ for the Weed God, Wiz. Yeah. Wiz. Yeah. I work for a dispensary. <laughs> right. I DJ. And I live in Las Vegas, right? So DJing actually for me is like my second or third priority here. Um, I'm not really worried about getting main rooms or headliners shit because like I'm 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 in like another brain of how I want to operate. Like I've talked to some local guys who are like I'm only doing I'm not opening up for everyone. I'm only doing okay, cool. I can understand if that's where you're at. Right. But for me, I'm in a place where I can make any piece as exciting as possible right uh if i'm opening or closing that's why i was trying to you know getting on the record and and telling eddie whoever just like i don't care what i play like you may look at me as like someone who you know because a lot of people come with the big i don't want to say egos in a bad way but of course people deserve the main rooms and all that but like if i could make set someone else up that's a win you know right i don't have to always be the the center of it and it takes a lot of pressure because i like to just i want to i would rather work the room for three or four hours Mm -hmm. than like hey let me come in here and play the exact pretty much the exact set the local did last night and he might have done it better because he's local you know um so it's a lot it's a lot for me i think i overthink about it djing a lot but i've been djing in all these capacities radio club Mm -hmm. and then on stage with wiz so it's like it has to I got to let go of it at some point, but I want to do it on my terms and not, you know, that feeling, dude, you don't want to show. The thing is, is I I feel like I I know exactly what you're talking about because I think we talked about this on our first episode back. Okay. And it was about DJing in your twenties, DJing in your thirties and DJing in your forties and how I'm entering the forties and how it's changing my perception on what kind of a DJ or person or business person, or brand I want right. to be. Right. I mean, we were because, talking about a strip yeah. club without even saying too much, but yeah. we were even talking about like how we handle relationships, right. you know, at this age because we come and go. And I just think, and this is a real thing, and I haven't put a name on it, and it's not a bad thing, but us DJs have learned to operate without, with just like, I could show up whenever I want. I'm the DJ. And like that sometimes is affects us later, I think, when DJs are just living in their own, like I could show up when I want to world, when it's like, I don't know. I don't. I haven't f- put my finger on that conversation yeah. yet, but I just feel like. Well, let's talk about we, it. Well, we got to yeah. a point where we could do whatever the fuck we want, right? Right. Like, sure, I don't have to be a fan about nothing. I don't have to do but, nothing. But the thing is, you you've seen more than a like a. I mean, a Las Vegas nightclub DJ has seen a lot, right? Yes. <laughs> right, 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 right. Like we've seen a lot, but you've been on tour right. with, 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 with Khalifa, Khalifa, and right. I could imagine what you've seen. Well, yeah. I mean, but even to a <laughs> point, what you uh, smoke, yo, what are you talking about? Right I mean, now? just everything, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, you, you was talking about yeah, something yeah, specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said, and you should, plural, like, plural. So I just imagine what you have seen. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you well, could explain. You well, I mean, explain. do tell us. Like, take the whiz part out of it and just imagine being in these countries and being able to have access to DJing. So, like, I'm yeah. in Australia or New Zealand and your whiz is DJ. Outside of America, like, hip hop is, is American culture, period. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. nowhere outside of this, outside of America, can anyone really, like, even, you know, as much as, much as the Canadians are close to this country, 
hip hop's truly American, right? It's, it's mm-hmm. truly so. You go out any part of the world and they see, like, wait, I'm Filipino, but they they might assume I'm black or whatever. They see mm-hmm. like Wiz. See, and, I thought I thought you were. Uh, yeah, I mixed. thought it was mixed. Yeah. Oh no, no, mixed. I'm I'm straight Filipino. You're straight Panorian. Yeah. Damn, yeah. damn. So uh, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was black and Filipino. But I mean, he could be a, a multitude of yeah. of different yeah. races. Yeah. yeah. I used to do a stand up joke where it was like I did stand up for like three times. I'd be like. Because I was on the radio, I'd be like, I sound white. Some people think I look black, but when they when the girl takes me home, she knows I'm Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that was good. You like that? <laughs> Start off with something. Yeah, that know. was really good. God damn it. <laughs> I feel like depending on what kind of haircut or yeah. beard you have, you could look more Asian. I mean, or, I've got or, everything, you know, but everything, right? Overseas, though, I don't think I look. Um, full african-american to some of them because there's filipinos and asians all right. over the world mm-hmm. right. so i don't necessarily they don't necessarily pin pin me as like are you are you super filipino like 100 uh no 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 i mean i you got the lumpia in the back bit, pocket little, little lumpia yeah right. nah, uh, <laughs> i'm a bad filipino right now because i don't i don't eat chicken pork or beef so that's been kind oh, of wow. a oh, struggle oh, wow. Last morgan man. this is that 40 plus yet so if you're under 40 <laughs> it's that 40 plus. it's that 40 plus You've been we're in the clubs for so long. I definitely had like bad drug years and eating like shit. I had a heart attack like ten yeah. years ago. I saw that, yeah, man. After your first tour with yes. Wiz, After you had a, a stroke? No, no, heart, heart attack. attack. Heart attack. Yeah, heart attack, yeah. What yeah. the f- what was <laughs> Let's it? Talk how, about that, yeah. I mean, was it just right, you, you wanna hear it real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Blacking right. the so fuck out, right? I went <laughs> <laughs> but like yo, you had to learn on your first tour, like God That's was crazy. looking down at like, yo, you you wilding out yeah. a little too These much. Guys, they're all laughing. Had too man. much good. You know what I'm they're all, <laughs> no, but I, but I'll tell you, dude. Because I know you dude. must have been wilding too much of a good out. time. Listen, <laughs> someone that someone listen caught up because the first tour it wasn't even like the third. It was the no, first. It was the first. This is when Black and Yellow was at its height. I'm gonna tell you this. So imagine dropping Black and Yellow, and the Steelers go to the Super Bowl, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So wait, it was our first tour. And I that I probably smoked a shitload of weed, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wiz Khalifa, Cushion Orange Juice first tour. Oh, um, yes. So everyone's trying to smoke with Wiz. So like every tour, like people are literally bringing you weed. Mm-hmm. And lit- I mean, it's crazy. So f- fast forward three month tour, we get back to Pittsburgh. We're like heroes. I'm DJing, and all of a sudden, like I never like left the DJ gig because I wasn't feeling good. Mm. And I like I just like couldn't felt like I wasn't having a deep breath like i was just like i just don't feel right like i and i i literally left the gig and i went home and i and i quit my full-time job in radio so i didn't have health benefits at all oh shit and so i was scared to go to the shit and so for two or three days i was like like why can't i breathe but i had pride you know like i don't want to go to that that's crazy like i don't want to go to fear right pride and fear yeah and I actually thought I must have bust a lung. Like, that's what I really thought. Like, oh, shit. you know, like, oh, shit, I smoked this fucking weed and maybe my, my lung is yeah, broken. My lung is broken. Like, <laughs> it's out of maybe it's green, you know. So um, so we finally decided, like, I woke up one of the nights. It was like the third night and I woke up. My back is on fire. And I'm like, fuck, like, something's not right. Uh. So I'm like, fuck it. Let's go to the clinic because the clinic. Let's go to the clinic. Is not, I mean, I was trying to avoid yeah. the hospital yeah, bill, man. Exactly, like, period. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um. And so I went to the clinic and I was like, uh, all right. And weed wasn't like we you weren't that open about weed then. Like if I went to the clinic today, I'd be like, I right. smoked hella weed. Um, but I was like, uh, I went on this tour with Wiz Khalifa and I smoked weed. So I think there's something wrong yeah. with me, you know, and they did like a lung thing. And they like checked my lungs and shit. And they're like, nothing's wrong. But they're like, since we can't find anything, we're going to send you to the emergency room. Uh-huh. And I think they knew but didn't want to tell me. Mm-hmm. You know they what don't I'm saying? Scare the shit yeah, out exactly. Because the ambulance came. They gave me one of them pills. I think that they give real old people to pop just in case they think they're having a heart attack. I think it was that. And it like get, brings your blood pressure. Yeah, down, something man. like yeah, that. Yeah. I get to the hospital. the The heart doctor had already left, but he came back and he's just like, "You had a heart attack this morning." I'm like, "Fuck," what? you know. And then imagine oh, he, shit, he had to man. call my mom and my sister and was like, "Um," and they lived in Philly. They're like, "Your son had a heart attack. We got to put him. He's got to get a stint in his heart." And so. When you hear like quadruple bypass or whatever, that's like how many stints that you need. And I, I just had one, and I had a ninety nine percent blocked artery um, from from I don't know just dietary. I mean, it could have been like honestly, I don't. They can't really tell you. That's you know, it scary. could be Filipino diet. I was definitely <laughs> heavy as I was probably two hundred thirty pounds. Uh, um, you know, my family has diabetes. I I mean, I'll just say it. I was doing 
drugs, uh, right. you know, around the time. And but I also know people who treat themselves crazy, like eat yeah. whatever they want, drugs as much as they want. These motherfuckers are still so I'm just kind of like I like to look at it as you're you know, 31, at the 30, time? like 30. Okay. I think I'm 30. And I just like it's a kiss from God, man. Just like. Right. You know, I don't know if it was a slowdown because literally after that year it was like the greatest year that I've had as far as DJing with Wiz and touring in Europe and MTV and all this shit. So honestly, I think it was a I call it the debt to the blessings, man. Wow. Look, we all can't have like we are all under this program that we think that our lives should just always be here and it needs to come in waves and we have to sleep. Right. And the mm -hmm. sun has to come up and the moon. And so right now I'm on this like different path of, of health and, and kind of changing my mind about a lot of things. But I but I just want you guys to welcome these low points in your life and yeah. not to define them as low points, just necessary. Um, that's great. You that's know? all. Yeah. That's a, that's. I feel like a lot of young motherfuckers need to know that because well, they yeah. want to, especially it's like DJs. The they want to dodge. Story. They just trying yeah. to dodge. They want to yeah. have this perfect, perfect like. No, but, they, but they're know? so hard on themselves too. Yeah. Right. You know, right. because right. no one ever documents the failure. Right. Right. Yeah. So right. when they have a failure, they think it's over. Right. And it, they they have to. And how many like, failures have you had? So exactly. many. Exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I just had a, I had a recent failure. <laughs> <Like, laughs> Let's I hear I have it. a different failure every week. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, as I, far as what? Just That's like you were saying young people. I feel like everyone should be listening to this right now because everyone's like going. No one likes to talk right? about the failures. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. almost like a. But, I, I, but well, I'm embracing that's, that's them. That's and great, yeah. I constantly am. I try to tell people constantly, like, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I have to be one part of a that has a platform right. that explains to people like. I welcome these things. You know, there's been a lot of like this. It, it sounds crazy, but the first time I ever played Mac Miller on the radio, mm. there was like rest a, in peace, Mac yeah, Miller. Rest in peace. I was the first person to ever play him on the radio. Um, and wow. it fucked up. There was like two songs. I don't know if y'all ever done radio before, but it fucked up. And there was two songs playing at the yeah. same time. <laughs> And and um, and because I was pre-recorded, right? And so I look at those things like people like I saw Lizzo perform at Coachella, um, you know, before the pandemic, and her mic went out, and it was terrible. And I'm always like, those are fine signs of great things coming. Mm. You know, most people want to look at those shits and be like, my shit's over. But it's like, right. yo, nobody wants to read a story that's like chapter one. And he lived happily ever after. You know what I'm saying? No. That's why I'm That's here. That's deep, man. You know, yeah. I mean, but you, but you, don't, you, don't, you don't even want to really hang out with motherfuckers who haven't failed because they are the biggest. <laughs> well, not even that they haven't failed. Yeah, there's a lot of, know, I'm just saying like, this out loud, I know names or whatever, but there's a lot of people out there who haven't so, struggled. I mean, well, no, nah, they've struggled, but they, they just, just, they don't talk about it. Well, they you just keep positioning it. themselves as like your God's gift to DJing in their city. Like, dog, you've held that residency down for 25 years like what's changed you know what i'm saying like bonix are you high right now no oh, i can't <laughs> imagine of him being high i was work i see I, look, you have something i got like it but that. it's empty oh nah. so, no nah, because i was like imagine when he's high if he's nah, talking nah, like I, this deep shit right now imagine when he's fucking blown right. no, <laughs> that shit would I, be insane i like i hate to be you know i kept thinking before i got in here i'm like man i got a lot of opinions like i, I don't want anyone to like yeah, hate, yeah. hate me for it or whatever but honestly man i just we got to start looking and acting like a community. You know, yeah. like Crooked, you could do this podcast by yourself and get all the guts and glory and still whatever. It but, would be awful by but, myself. Well, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, it's like, that's what people forget is that everyone wants to be a brand. Everyone wants to be at me. But like having community, that's the one thing I like about some of the West Coast DJs is like, y'all at least have like a community and, and mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to get into or like, you know, people are watching from the outside. It looks like. You know, um, Except, wait, what do you mean? Like the West Coast has a community like look, they, I, they, they help. They they connect and they they look out for each other. Well, like, you know, right? just listening to like the podcast with VTech and how many different agencies y'all been together and not together. And yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Everyone's helping in different ways. Um, it just feels like uh, it feels like a little bit more of a community out here in the West Coast. I'd yeah. Say, yeah. You know? the, th the thing is, it's funny because when I go on DJ Twitter, I used to like, you know, kind of. I used to engage and shit, and I used right. to get involved. Mm -hmm. And I kind of look at it, and I study all the DJs right. and what they say and how they react to shit. And I've just noticed in the past year or two, they they all really, um, they're all so desperate to be accepted. Oh my god! And, and they ready want, to cry because right? you said this. Well, and they, they just, wait, wait, and they uh, want and they want to be validated and. Sometimes they say the most outrageous and egotistical and annoying shit. And we all have. Yeah. Right. 
And I look at them and I just say, damn, like, I really want to, like, guide some of these motherfuckers the right way on how to, how to, how to navigate their career, but also yeah. how to, like, how to kind of, yo, this, you know what I mean? This is the first thing I think about. Yeah. Do the guys I look up to do that, right? I'll give right. you a really good example. Scratch Bastard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking amazing DJ. Mm-hmm. I think he's one of the best going on in the world right now. Yeah. And we, me, like, I've heard some of his opinions when we talk, like, but he doesn't have to say it. And no. he just has to do the smile and DJ for us. And that's great. And I'm not but he, saying. But he's Canadian, too. Like, the motherfuckers are different is over nice there. nice over there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they got ketchup some, potato some, chips Some of them about free health care. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I, I have a really bad theory that is probably going to get me in trouble. But yeah, yeah. Um, it goes back to America being just, like, so hip hop that, like, Canadians kill it because like they're not from America so they just like I don't want to say they overcompensate it but they're like we're invited to this party so these motherfuckers kill it they go the extra mile to know the records to produce like right. even Bieber right like they, they try Drake, to be Drake they, is a perfect example they feel like a, they're not but they feel like a tourist right yeah. and they want to Acceptance. respect the craft and the culture so much that they over prepare, they over educate themselves, right. and that's not a bad thing. So I don't want it to be like, it's, uh, no, no, it's almost like Japan. Actually, like when you go to Japan, oh like yeah, those, yeah, like those motherfuckers know hip hop history. Yeah, yeah. Right. you know, like right. they know, right. they know a lot of they know it better than yeah. some I'm Americans. A, I'm gonna yeah. tell you for anyone that actually DJs, and Vegas isn't a huge city, but it's obviously Mecca. If you ask anyone that is in a small city, so like when I was in Pittsburgh, yeah, I thought, look, I need to be. A billion times. Well, I'm from Philly originally, so that was like my real sort of like. You was born in Philly. I was right? born in Philly. I went to high school there. College is Pittsburgh, so I spent both of the same amount of time, like 18 years and then 20 years in Pittsburgh. Um, but I thought about it. Uh, I'm high now, so I forget what I was going to say. I'm not high, but I, I, what were we just talking about? Uh, Canadians. Oh, oh, oh you talking about like yeah. being a DJ? You looking now? Oh DJ. yeah, so in Pittsburgh, in a small Pittsburgh, city. Yeah, sorry, uh-huh. there's a stoner moment. Um, <laughs> you know, I used to be like, yo, I gotta. Be if someone in New York is going to be 10 times better than me, someone in Philly is going to be. So when you're in a small city, like especially Pittsburgh, man, Pittsburgh is a fucking amazing, talented. So many great people have come out of there, Mm -hmm. like in all like areas and service industry that. So when I started traveling and DJing, I was like, damn, I'm just as good as these motherfuckers. And they had all the the resources being in New York or Philly or Florida or Miami like y'all got all the shows y'all got all the DJs and it made people and I think in smaller cities posture up and be like yeah I really gotta know and that's what we're talking about Canada like Canadians fucking kill it man yeah no you're right they're all really technically dope right and they fucking they're super creative right. like Drake's never American but you know he'll be hanging out the hood in like Memphis or some shit and you're just like alright like just soaking in yeah, just everything totally, you know totally, what I mean totally, totally. and then all of a sudden his new album has like a Memphis sound to it yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying right. like, I mean because smart. you don't get too many like once you travel Europe maybe it's a different mentality but you don't see a lot of Americans being like yo I'm trying to be the number one artist in Canada bro like you know you don't, you don't <laughs> <laughs> like he's big in Canada yeah, you know? <laughs> not not in a bad way, but but some yo. people who are smart though. I know artists that are like, yo, I'm I'm an artist and I want to go to to you know Germany and be yeah, an EDM DJ yeah. or in, you know. But Japan. It, you know, it's so important to be kind of the big guy in your city, you yeah. know, or like to have something in your city because like I <clears throat> ever since I've been traveling, like I just came from Seattle. They're like, yo, you gotta you gotta link up with Swerve One. And I was like, yo, I went to Swerve One's party on Saturdays at Q Nightclub. Mm. And it was like, yo, I, I got linked up by Phenom. Right. If I go to, uh, you know, Scottsdale, I link up. At the right. time, it was fashion. Right. Yeah. Now it's like cuts well. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. So it's like we all have those connects in the city. And every region I go to has their sound, kind of. Mm-hmm. But I feel like nowadays it's been the sound is a little blurred. Yeah. Because totally. of social media and like t- and streaming and everything like that. But I think that was... Uh, I gotta shout out JCO because yeah. back back when DJing traveling, I always said this to Marvel too. Like JCO, I think he, he might have actually linked us. Actually, uh, JCO linked a lot. Like he was traveling first, like before a lot of us were, and so he linked me up with a lot of people when I was yeah. on tour. Like, yo, go see Marvel, go see Scratch Bastard, yeah. go mm-hmm. see this person, and I love the DJ network for that. And that's an amazing right. thing. Is that uh, I, I'll just say this for DJs, you gotta. If you're uh, and this is if you want it, because some people are happy with making money and going home. Um, but like you referencing the big man in your city, like that should be the goals for a lot of DJs. Yeah. You know, it's just like here's how I look at DJing. You ready? 
if they wrote a book about DJ culture in your city, what would be your part in it? That's how I answer that question mm -hmm. is. So if they wrote a book about Las Vegas DJing, you're definitely in that book. You know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> you're a footnote. I don't, I don't sure. know. You're for sure a footnote. I don't know. Well, I mean, but the podcast is a part of the culture. I'm saying, so yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, the sneaker store, like whatever yeah. it is, is like, um, that's how I look at DJing. So when people try to like frown up, up, upon like do it for the culture, like no, it's about the fucking culture, man. It's about what is my, how did I push this culture forward mm -hmm. within this industry? And a lot of people, they they operate with like I see. Isn't it crazy that you could watch rap DJs and their DJs are using like RCA outputs for like stadium shows? Like, you know, it's crazy. I, I just, it's, <laughs> like, no, it's the it's truth, like the fucking man. Controller and I, shit. I fucking see it all the time. Like going to all these festivals, like all these new rappers, they have like their little friend that DJs and they have like the little controller the with RCA. them. It's like, we got to just well, What's an XLR? Push this yeah, like, what is that? Yeah, yeah what's an XLR? And what's this is why man? sound guys like hate DJs because it's like, yeah. It's fucking mm -hmm. three inputs. I think sound fucking... guys hate everybody. I think so too. <laughs> well, sound guys hate, you know, they hate hip hop guys. Uh, well, they did for a while, but um, yeah, man. So, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk about the road. Yeah, let's, go. let's talk uh, about the road. Yeah. You know, you've been with Wiz a long time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? I don't I don't want to go. I know you've probably talked, you're probably sick of talking about the history nah, with you and Wiz nah, and stuff like that. It's a blessing, so how did bro. You it's a blessing, man. <laughs> My well, favorite DJs. Didn't even get to experience what I got to experience. Yeah, with you know, yeah. like it's a different, it's a unique thing when you're with a rapper, you know. Because it, it's 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 kind of not. I mean, maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's a beautiful thing when a DJ comes up with the rapper in the same fucking city. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. they actually, you know, like some Biggie and Mr. Siege type shit. Mm -hmm. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And right, I really right. like even with like OG Chase B and like Travis, Travis, Travis right, yeah. right. and we could talk about Travis a little bit later because I want to mm. ask you about that. I part. do, man. Yeah. My, yeah. my heart going out to all. It's crazy. We, talk, we should happening. talk about. It. Will yeah. was a military brat, right? So he yep. moved to he was Pittsburgh. Actually, <laughs> born in like South Dakota or something. Yeah, and then moved to Detroit, and then from Detroit, I think to Pittsburgh, right? Something like that. But Something, he yeah. lived in Germany and Japan, yeah. and like as a military kid. Yo, so I got a question. Uh, yeah. I, wait, go ahead. I mean, when y'all first met, was you DJing and was he rapping at so the time? So he was 13 and I was 20s and I had, gra maybe I was still in college or graduate and I was on the radio already. So I was like the dude on the radio in Pittsburgh. Yeah. They, I was on a pop station. Um, and so uh, Wiz was like recording at my but ID Labs. I don't know if you know the history, but ID Labs is kind of like Wiz's whole um, yeah, your homie is like Edan. Yeah, right? Edan. One of the pros exactly. Producers, thank you, right? thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, shout out to Edan. That's my boy. Well, he, ID Labs is like what? It's like three people. Well, it's really Edan. It's Edan. And then some people have like come and gone, like Big Germ and some other guys. Mm -hmm. I, I think you know we're all everyone's still family or whatever. Uh, but uh, Edan Wiz was recording at well, like with his high school friends, like after school at the, at his studio. Crazy. And and I remember Edan telling me like, Yo, there's this kid Cam who's just like better than all his friends. And then it went from him getting an internship at the studio. And so I was always there as like helping as a big brother, but we had a team that eventually helped him. So I was helping him book book shows um, at colleges and help, you know, I think I truly, I, I always say this, but I don't know how we can really figure out. I must have booked one of Wiz's first shows ever, if yeah. not the first one. So you were his Mr. C pretty much. Like, kind of. Like, I, right? I, uh, I wouldn't even say it as strong because like I just played my role, which was, hey, I'm supporting this dude. You're supporting local music. Yeah, supporting local yeah. music. And I was on an iHeart station, so it was very hard to do that. But I did it anyway because... At that time, I was DJing. Like I was. What I, year? What, what year was this? That was like around? 2010. 2010. So like, yeah, like 2009, 2010. So you were probably one of the main names in Pittsburgh right now because you were on the radio definitely, and definitely. then Nugget. I'm sure yeah, Nugget, Nugget and Zim, yeah, Zimmy. Zimmy, right? Zimmy was kind of just starting at the end of 2010s. Right. Um, shout out to Nugget, by the way. Yeah, yeah shout out to Nugget. Nugget. I was just uh, at his bar last week. It's just amazing. Crazy. To see him. The, the like, DJ now. Have you, played, have you played there? No, I haven't played there. Play but there. I want to visit him because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's just, I, I love that dude. No. He's just always been a great dude. Good mm -hmm. dude. And he's one, I love seeing the DJ like evolve to like owning clubs owning and having clubs, bars yeah, totally. and doing them that. Not only know? that, I think he does like real estate now too. Like he yeah. owns a few apartments and it's shit. It's all hand in hand. I yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah. I see it. Yeah. yeah. No, nah, it's an amazing setup. And picture this me and Nugget, we had our first residency together like mm. in 99. 
99. And so huh? like I always said this and you know this is tongue in cheek but it was like if if your favorite DJ was a nugget at that time then it was me you know and, <laughs> and it was, it was a, you know, I love it no it was just a cool like you know yeah, and that's yeah. what's cool is that me and nugget actually got closer later after we like we were just always busy right we're always DJing so we got really closer later in life and just I love watching people kind of graduate themselves after DJing because what yeah. we were talking about before is and there's nothing wrong with this but but from you know NBA players it's hard for them to be in the NBA forever right mm -hmm. so i yeah. just like watching other people dance and kind of go from djing and pivot big word last year um it's cool and that's kind of right. where i'm at my career where like look do i want to play vegas shit right totally well it, and, and, does as but, we get older doesn't it kind of give us a reassurance that there is life after djing or with djing do you know what i'm saying it kind of reassures right, me right, like yeah. when i saw never buy his first house right it gave me reassurance like oh shit i could do this too i could buy my own shit or i could you know when right. when i see i think when we opened the store when never and i we started new right all of a sudden, all these DJs started opening stores. Right. Like, no, was, you guys, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, definitely. For, no, no, what I'm first, saying, but right. it plants the seed for like other, totally. all these, like, oh shit, they, we could do that too. Just like, besides the DJs, barriers, yeah. But I, I think the scary part for people our age or my age or, or whatever is having to want to put yourself through a process again. Mm -hmm. And that's like, yeah, yeah. A, that's it's a definitely scary. That's man. a message yeah. that mm -hmm. I want to put out there is like, that's what I'm really saying about DJs who are holding on to it is like, yo, the longer you aren't trying to put, you know, Put yourself in another process that's where i'm at like the people at hardeen some of them are like why are you even doing this like according to what we see your instagram like you're cool and like why would you and i'm just like listen after last year i could have took some radio jobs in other markets but they weren't trying to pay me and the radio situation sucks so pivoting into this weed industry is different and there's we're creating this like it's a it's a it's a great position to be in because I don't have to force myself to mm -hmm. either DJ. I love DJing. That's why I don't want to say it. But, like, I get the feeling of, like, be Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And, like, sometimes the crowd's not as thankful. Or, like, you just want to be playing some other shit. Or, like, this or that. So, like, at 41, I may be overthinking it. Like, people at my age are probably still having fun DJing everywhere. But I'm really just trying to no, figure out No, but it's like you, you get jaded. You know, sometimes because you've done, you know, you've I've been in rooms that have been so crazy mm -hmm. and I've had crowds that were so crazy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the music doesn't evolve. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're doing we're playing the same shit right. over and over right. and we're trying to creatively find different ways of playing the same shit. Right. right. But it's and it's also the one thing I don't want to be is I don't want to be competing with younger DJs. Like fighting Dude, with them for the gigs, you, you know I mean, what I'm but saying? And that and that's the truth. Like, yeah. so he, like, I, 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 I have motherfuckers hit me up like, "Yo, we want you here," and like in in this city and other cities, and I'm like, "What's the rate?" And I'm like, "That's not like," and I'm like, "I could tell from the rate, I'm taking a local guy's gig." Right. So I'm, I'm like, "Nah, I'm good." Right. Because it's like there's a, I've been into doing this for a long time. That, you know, and I, I can't speak for everybody. Right, right. I shouldn't be taking that rate. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, right. that should be for the local dude or the younger dude coming up. Right. So I have to figure out ways to make my money with the experience and the knowledge I've learned for the right. past 20 years right. in my industry right. to get a higher rate or make more money off of that shit. Right. And I feel like that's where I'm at right now. It's like, I don't want to be fighting with these young motherfuckers. Right. Because I think when I was in my mid-30s, I was kind of competing with the younger dudes. I was right. like, "Oh, you you think the hot shit? Watch when I get on." Right. You know, like right. let's let's. Oh, you think you popping right now? Right, right, right. Like right. watch, watch, y'all. Right. I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm melt you. Right. Like you know, I'm gonna eat your food tonight. Right. You lost your residency. I had that like <laughs> attitude. Yo, when I what the fuck, fuck you did? really? I, yo, fam, from New York, fam. Bro. When I was in my early like thirties, but then you know, sure. like you know, like the younger hot motherfucker would come up, yeah, and he'd be like, "Oh, you gotta put him in a so like crooked. You gotta open for him." I'd be like, "Cool," and I'd be like, "I'm gonna open for him, and I'm gonna melt his face. I'm gonna melt him." No, no, no. Like I'm gonna melt, I'm gonna melt him, and I'm gonna burn him. No, I'm not gonna burn him. I'm gonna melt his face so that melt. This is the best thing you could do as an opener. You cannot burn him off. Like I don't mean they Wait, burn, but, but don't burn him. But you just play the room so fucking yeah. nasty. You don't got to play the hits. You just do and I don't right, and I don't right, mean like right. getting on the mic, being like, "Yo, what the fuck is up?" Da, da, da. I'm right. talking about you just hit him with good selection. Because right. mm -hmm. I'm not gonna get on the mic and amp some shit up when there's when there's a headliner. You try to DJ scratch the one? No. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. no, no, no. So what I do is I really just I focus on selection and I focus and I'm like I know this room. 
Right. So I, I start playing shit that these motherfuckers would never think to play. Right. So the best thing you could do, do to a headline if you open it for him, right. and when you're with all respect, right. is when he has his face like, I don't know what to play because you're so all over the place. Right. And you're making motherfuckers sing along to rock 80s, classics, reggae, right. hip hop, right. house. You've been all over. Right. I don't know what to do. And that's when, so you know what I'm saying? Did, did that, you know did, what I'm talking about, though, exactly right? Did that happen about. to you when someone played ASAP Ferg work? Oh, ooh, you're talking about ooh, when I was on ooh, Twitter. Ooh, duh. You was on, <laughs> yeah. Shots yeah, yeah. fired. No, no uh, you, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I was on Twitter and I went off on an opener. Yeah. And uh, which playing. was like, yo, like, so like coming from yeah. your standpoint, I think, um, yeah, you're allowed to say whatever you want, right? Uh, watching it from like Twitter kind of yeah. felt like, you know, people were like, Yo, there's like a million songs that you could have played instead of that, right? right? So, what's your take on that though? Was it like that song, or was it the energy, or was it? Did you? My feel... thing is like my thing is like this. Because right? you should have brought that same energy of just like, well, I'm gonna smash this regardless. No, know? no, I mean, Which I had that I'm same sure energy, right, right? Right? I'm gonna smash this regardless. Were you drunk when you tweeted that though? I was definitely drunk. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, that's important to put out there. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I was definitely. I even think I said in the tweet, I know I'm drunk. Oh, you did, you right? did. So you he wouldn't did. have tweeted that if he wasn't drunk. You probably still would have. No. No, I would have been nah, annoyed. He, he I would have let, let it go. I would have been in the Give group chat with y'all. Yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. But Give me that would. whole, like, what your whole take on it. So, wait, all right. So, after there was a club, right? I'm not going to name the city or the club. There's this club that I'd go to where the opener, right, would consistently burn and play, like, the newest hits, and right? I, roll. I can't eye roll enough. I know, but it's one of those things where, like, you know, like... I talk to other headliners. So when I talk to other DJs and we mention, let's say, your name, mm. and if I'm like, yo, do you know Bonix? And they do this, <sighs> yeah. Uh. You already know right. that's that's a violator, right? Right. Kind of like <laughs> Did he do that to you? No, and I'm saying like that's when I when I speak about this opener. Oh, okay, right. When I speak right, about right, this right, opener, right, right. people roll their eyes. People are like, uh, uh, yeah, that yeah, dude's yeah. the worst. Right. Like he he just fucking he just goes in, uh -huh. you know? Right. So, I, you know, he played at one point. It was 11.15. He played ASAP for work. Um, all I do is win. Right. Uh, right. What do you call it? Pop that. Mm -hmm. I don't really. I pop that. All I do is win. I don't really care. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. but those records still don't have no place in the opening set. I mean, I it's cool. Yeah. You know what? There was, there's a quote True. from DJ AM, and I just had a conversation with Brian Bass, Bassett from uh, Sacramento, from the park. Uh -huh. We had a long conversation. We were talking about openers and DJs and everything. And he said... The one quote from DJ AM that he that he would tell Brian Bassett, he's like, "Yo, what kind of opener do you want?" He's like, "I just want the opener to keep it sexy, mm. play for the girls, right? Keep it sexy, and then I get on, and I do what I fucking do, right? But you never fail in any genre of music, keeping it sexy, right? Mm -hmm. And 1, keeping 1, the girls 1, dancing. What thousand percent? So 1, 000. my my whole thing is like, at eleven fifteen, if you want to go, Travis Scott." And have the crowd raging and doing all that. That's cool. But at some point, that energy can't just keep going up and up and up. Right, right. It's got to go down and right, up and down right, and up totally, again, right? Totally. So anyway, with this with this opener, the second time, right? That first time, that was probably... The thing is, like, it was after the pandemic. Right, right, right. I haven't DJed right. in a long time. But I was... All the venues I did DJ, I was hearing great DJs. Right. So I was in a great mood. I was like, yo, D I love DJing again. I miss it. Mm. And then I went to this venue. I'm like, oh, this motherfucker again. Like, it brought me <laughs> back to like, oh, I got to deal with these fucking, right. these dudes again. Right. Like, who right. don't know how to open, who are going out for self, right? right. Yeah. So, and then everyone on Twitter was like, why are you still holding on to ASAP Ferg? There's so much new music out, right? right? right and I was just like, yeah. And then some of the dudes that were like, yo, man, like, I had an opener. He's like, I don't know about ASAP Ferg. That's not a big song for me. But an opener was playing um, Young Thug Ski and um, Soldier Boy, I Make It Clap. Yeah. And I had to tell him, like, you need to chill. You and I'm like, down. you need to sit down. That's when I hopped on because he was violating with those two songs. <laughs> and in my head, I'm like, what room are you in? Right? That you so wait, 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 saying, wait, as far as them being big songs? or Yeah. Like, yeah oh, okay. What room uh, are you in where Ski and I Make It Clap, Soldier Boy are the biggest songs you know, right now. Right. So, like, obviously, y'all don't know what kind of room I'm in. Right. <laughs> so, like, wait, I'm not judging your room, yeah, right? Totally. Because there are hip hop rooms and maybe some regional, like, regional cities. I don't know where the fuck where those songs would be huge. Right. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, like, I'm in a room where it's open format. Right. And that meaning, I have any night that I'm there, it could be 
more heavy EDM crowd, Latin crowd, hip hop crowd, or whatever, or right. pop top 40. Right. You yeah. understand? Yeah. Now everyone's like, well, who gives a fuck about ASAP Ferg work? All right. So if I have an EDM crowd, how many songs can I play from hip hop that are somewhat new right. that are going to speak to all, right. all of those people and unite them? Yeah. Right. 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 And ASAP Ferg work one is one of those See, records. Yeah, it's definitely right. one of them. Right. So that's what they don't understand. Right. And they don't understand it not because they're stupid. It's because they've never done those rooms. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. you, I can't talk to a DJ that doesn't play house at any time of the night. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you play hip hop all night, right. you ain't going to go for the ASAP Ferg. I, I 100% know that. Right. You right. can play way too sexy. You do whatever right. the fuck you're going to you, do. To you, it's old, but like in an open format room, it's a little different. And it's an open format yeah, room. Hip- if I got a heavy crowd, a heavy... Um, I'm going to need those records, especially yeah. if there's a performer on right. mm-hmm. and I have to transition with the performer's DJ. Right. I don't know how he's going to spin. I don't know what record he's going to lead me off with. And I need that ASAP Ferg. Right. If I pop, if I drop the ASAP Ferg, right? Right. When people hear that, dun, 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 <laughs> right. they're going to wild the fuck out. Right. Yeah. Who? Who? Right. Who? Right. When it I mean, sucks, got, it is early for like 11.15. Do you know what I'm saying? Shit. So, so yeah. people, this is the thing with openers. And this is, and I'm going to tell you a conversation that I had with this opener the second time. The second time he opened for me, and I have notes on this. It was 11. <laughs> it, seems, it seems like the witching hour for him to violate was 11.15. Because 11.15, he started playing My Type Sweetie. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell no, bro. And then he played Peppers. That's, that's foul. Mm. So then. I, you can't play Peppers at 11.15. Come on, man. Nah, you can't play and the thing, this is the crazy thing. The crowd wasn't feeling it. Right. He was playing. Some other he was playing some Latin house earlier. He was playing some reggaeton earlier, mm-hmm. and it was destroying. And I was looking at him, and I was like, he was killing it with sexy shit. Right. Girls were that. dancing, and then he threw on these big ass songs. Right. And they wasn't ready. Right. Because they was in a, in a, in a different mode. They wasn't drunk yet. Right. Do you understand? Well, that, that's that's where I was kind of going before about like playing that headliner set anymore for me. So like, I'd love to play the open. Like I, I'm telling people will be like. You, you know, you could do the, we'll book you for this. And I was like, look, don't worry about stepping on my toes if you ask me to play later or earlier. Like, just set the fucking vibe, like, where, you know, where it's at. And, yeah. and, and you know, that's kind of what you're saying. Yeah. This, this is with, like, well, the, the thing is this. With an opener, if I if I knew when I work with him, right. it's all respect. Right. You know, but it, sometimes there would be, like, the headline. If I'm opening for a headliner and they feeling themselves, that's mm-hmm. when I go and, like, I'm going to melt this motherfucker's face. So did face. you say something to him? No, no, no. Did you say something to him? So, what, just, so, so what, what, as a veteran so, DJ, So this how is do what you... I did. So I went to the booth and I started standing behind him. Okay. And he was about to play Taki Taki, right? And I said, don't play that. And he was like, cool. And he was going to play another another record, right? Yeah, or some bang. Yeah, yeah. Just like, and I was like, don't play that. And he took off his headphones and he turned around and he said, like, what can I play? What can I play then? And I, and I told him, I said, you could play anything that I'm not going to play or that I might need. Right. He's like, you, why you, he's like, why are you holding on to these old songs? He's like, there's so much new shit. I'm like, what's the new shit that we playing in 2021 right now? Right. What's the hottest hip hop record <laughs> that we playing right, right now? Right, right. And he was like, way too sexy. I'm like, oh, word? Play that. That's going to destroy the whole room? Right. I'm like, that's a hit or miss. Right. That, yeah. that, that's like, I could, get, I could get a little bit of feedback. But that's not a hit hit. Right. So I asked him, what is the biggest hit for hip hop right now? He said, no, nah, you're right. So I said, then what am I supposed to play? Because you just play Sweetie. <laughs> right, right, right? Right, right, right. And uh, not that there isn't a million records to, to play or anything, but you really, like you saying. Like, no, you, what is the hit you, this year? You you answer me. What is the hip hop hit this I mean, year? I would say way too sexy. Oh, that would be my first thing. But is that really the biggest banger for the, for, for the year? That would have been like number 11 right. on it's, a regular year. Do you know what I'm saying? Right. It would have right. been a mid. I put it this way: right. you totally. want you totally. I drop you if you drop Hot Boy, right? Bobby Schmurder mm-hmm. and Way Too Sexy. Right. Who's gonna sing the words? Right. And just because it's old doesn't mean. And that's a that's a good. And that's why I talked to my sister. Mm-hmm. So what is the banger that I should be playing right now? What's the number one shit? He couldn't answer. Right. 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 But so he's like, then why you need Tacky Tacky? Right. I said, damn. I w- wait, wait. He's I, still I, going though. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, I'm bro- well, I broke this down to him because I called him the next day. Right. Because we got Good. into it. I'm glad you did. I did call him. Did. I reached Good. out because that's, that's. I wanted to know if he was violating because he was selfish or he was ignorant, and right. it it showed. It kind of showed it was a little bit of both. Right. But he's like, why you need Taki Taki? That shit is old, right? And I said, like I said, if it's a mainly hip hop crowd, and there's some Latin people there. What is the hip hop crowd gonna know? Right. Are they gonna do the new sec? Right. Are they going to know the John and Randy's joint? Or are they going to know 
Taki Taki. Right. Because Cardi's on it. Right. And they're going to sing the and words to the Cardi's verse. So that is my crossover open format record, my friend. Do you understand? Yeah. So I need that record in case someone wants reggaeton or a big table who's spending $10,000 wants reggaeton. Right. I got my reggaeton set. I got that. Right. But how many times in a night do the motherfuckers need to hear Peppers? Right. How many times in the night do they need to hear Sweetie? Right. Do you understand? Right. So what are we doing here? Are we professionals? Right. Or are we just doing whatever the fuck we want so that motherfuckers can hear the same songs every fucking hour? Right. Because if you playing Peppers at 11.15 and you know I have to come out and start at midnight, I'm a, I am I gotta say Peppers because you played it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. If I come out and that's the biggest record right now, right. you want me to hold back because you opened with that 11.15? Right. And I would, how long am I supposed to wait before it's okay for me to play that record? Right. Well, you could play it twice, and you yeah, all right. So we not professionals then, right? Totally. Because who has more choices, me or you? Right. You got more choices. Totally. <laughs> Do you that's understand? True. That's good. That's a good. Point. It's not only that you're not looking at you like you don't look at what's happening in the headline set. That night that he did that to me right. was a crazy night. I had a guest DJ come on, a reggaeton DJ come on, mm -hmm. and I had a performer and his DJ come on. I had to switch, and this is like this is in Cali. This is the West Coast. Right. They close at two a.m. Right. So I'm switching over DJs in a two hour set right. with different motherfuckers. I need all the ammunition I can get. Right. I need those records because right. I don't I need to figure the crowd out. Right. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I think it's different. Like this this is Does this make sense though? No, it, it, yeah, it makes sense, but when you just pull it apart from Twitter, like everyone But that's why I know it, yeah, I yeah, know right. who I know the motherfuckers who responded. Right. He responded like, that's an old record. You know, if if, a, if a opener plays that, I don't let it deter me from whatever the fuck. Right. You know, and I'm like, all right, now it's this not is not wait 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 wait, right, right, wait, right. wait. <laughs> but now you're just tweeting to make yourself look dope because you're like make it seem like you're the greatest DJ and nothing ever phases you. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I know that's not true. Right. And it's like you want everyone to be like, word, like the <laughs> we don't let no motherfuckers no fuckers fuck with us and all of the shit. <laughs> everyone knows you a great DJ. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. And he, I think he recalled the night. He's like, you know, like a, a, an opener played that for me and it didn't affect my night one bit. Right. And then what he failed to tell about that story, because I know motherfuckers. Right. And motherfuckers tell me about their nights. Right. Is that DJ got pulled that he was talking about. Oh, he did. For He's like, yeah, my opener played ASAP Ferg and nothing happened. And I'm like, yeah, well, I heard that that motherfucker got pulled and you had to get on early. So right. what do you, how come you didn't include that in the tweet? You and my, <laughs> and he's my, I, I love that yeah, motherfucker. That's the, that's the man. But that's what I'm saying. Like with Twitter, after that whole thing, I was like, oh, I, I'm not even going to get right. age with well, these that, motherfuckers. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I back in 2000 something, I probably was that guy on Twitter that was like, fuck that, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. fucker, you know. But I, a lot of things changed as I got older. Like I'm not like a no request like sort of guy. Like, you know, people go to fucking grave like. You know, shout out to Nugget. He got a neon sign in his club. No fucking request, you know? <laughs> which is cool. Like, I get the, I get the, I get the sentiment for sure. Uh, but I'm not. I'm too old to be. I've been doing it for too long to be tweeting while I'm DJing. Like, cause here's here's my thing about those those sort of tweets. You ready? <laughs> if you are the greatest DJ and you killed it and you're the man, yeah. the story you're gonna pick out from the night you killed it was that two minute interaction of a shitty interaction why don't you tell me what was the what did you play last night that was amazing what set it off but the next day you choose to focus on that one person and that's where it starts to get funny is these cats are focusing on the this little sliver of negativity to get these reactions versus yeah. like if you're the fucking greatest dj then tell me something you did great last night you know versus like yo the people in the audience, they're not fucking DJs, right? I'm not a fucking doctor, so I can't go up to the doctor and be like, yo, dog, you ain't doing that right. Like, could, doc, I, 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 I might ask a doctor a basic-ass question the same way someone in the audience may ask a DJ a basic-ass right, question, right? right? Though That person worked 40 hours this week and just wants to fucking hear her favorite song. Not try to piss you off, and I get... See, here's the other part is that people are like, well, they can be nice about it. But you tell me any service industry person in this whole fucking city who never had a bad drink request or a bad stripper, you know, it's, it's like, a part of the it's job. It's a part of the fucking Bro, job. Yeah. And if you choosing to focus on that on your Twitter while you're DJing to me says everything about it. Everything. But, that, but that's to me, that's a that's a young DJ. Totally. And, 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 I, I, and, I, and I've been like, there and I've been there. It's just and I like, feel like you got to let these young DJs just say what they want and then realize later, like. You know, later they're just gonna realize, like, damn, I ain't really have to say nothing. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's where I'm at. Like yeah. where. But what did you take from my tweet about the ASAP? Well, Ferguson? you know, so I would say first response was yes. was like, damn, it's like a million other songs that he could talk right, about. Right. But the way that you're talking about it, that it's like a, you're look. Yo, I won't debate with anyone that there's a million other fucking songs, but you, the way that you're talking about my audience will understand this crossover, like that to me is where the science is. Right. And I like hearing that part of it because now you made it make more sense. It was like, yo, this is a safe record for me in this arena. That, exactly. And I like how you said that. And to me, that kind of broke through more of just like, that's a teachable moment. And it doesn't look like a teachable moment. It looks like you're mad and drunk and angry. And I guess so. Right. I guess it's just like the, a little bit of both. But, but you know what I love is that. <laughs> With Twitter, right? They saw that tweet and they immediately were like, "Well, let me, let me. How do I use this for my agenda?" Right. So my agenda is either letting well, other that, people, letting other people know that I'm a, you said I'm it. a better it's, DJ. Yeah, you said it. Or, said it. or we don't need records like right. that. And like, like, why is Crooked holding on to these records? Right. Like, he's old, he's washed, mm -hmm. and then all these young DJs. I'm gonna use this agenda to shit on older DJs, right? Yeah. So everyone has an agenda on Twitter, and they're using my tweet to do that. But what they don't realize is like I've been in this a, a, a long, long time and I'm calculated and I analyze a lot of shit. Right. So if I say that I need that record, I need that fucking record. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and, that, and if you're like, well, why do you need that record? Then I'd be like, you should be asking yourself that question. Right. And not really, judging and, you for. No, no, no. You should be asking yourself that question and, and ask yourself, what room am I in? Right. And what room is he in? Because right. that makes all the fucking difference. Right. What city's in? What you know? What's going? What the fuck's going on? Right. In Cali, to me, you do not need to repeat any fucking records in a town that has four hours of yeah. nightclub time. Not yeah. even three and, and a half hours. Three and a half. I'm, at, I'm actually not <laughs> mad at repeating. Like I, th I have had thought about it a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but I get what you're saying. Like a lot I of think, the rules think, have changed. Like from what I thought, I used to not. Yeah. Dude, I used to go four hours and not repeat one song on vinyl, bro. Like how did that even happen? You know. Now I have a harder time even thinking about that. But I wanted to say this real quick and yeah. bring it back to remind DJs of this because I don't think that people recognize that. When a person walks up to you and requests a song or whatever, like they have more songs than you do in here than you do on your laptop. Unless you have the unless you have the title and you're DJing off that. Yeah. You like, mean beat source. Or beat source. <laughs> yeah. Beat source. I got beat source. So um well what I'm saying is like that's like I feel like DJs who've been DJing for a long time, like of course they're mad that they, you don't have that song. Why? Because they can fucking listen to it right here. Like they mm -hmm. have, But you know what sucks uh, about that? Recently, people would come up, me, come up to me while I'm DJing, right. request a song, and it's like, sorry, I don't have it. And they'd be like, hey, wait, 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 wait a minute. And I, that's I, have, what, I have it on my phone. Can that, you connect your, my but, phone? To but the that, but that's what I'm saying about DJing. Ver like, they're not a DJ, so they don't. They don't know that. how it works. But yeah. the fact that they can have it in their pocket and play it, that's what I'm saying is that we have to have some sort of like, understanding yeah. for that you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying like of course you're right of course i've had the person pu plug up but the phone and show me your face recently. of course i mean <laughs> like youtube just put it on youtube yeah, I'm right, right. yo fuck? i mean i've had that like just rip it off youtube and it definitely is but they don't know that shit mm -hmm. they of course they can hear anything they want to right at the second and yeah. they don't know that mm -hmm. and for people to condemn them not fully yeah but we just got to educate these that's what i'm saying like it's but what, i don't i don't think requests bother me they don't bother me at all they don't bother me at all no they don't i mean especially me if you don't have the song they'd be like hey play this song I have i'm just like yeah i can't do that sorry but yeah. they keep i had one lady was like nagging the fuck out of me this past weekend and i'm like oh, I, I tried to i almost flipped out i had to like like calm down like chill chill finally saw a security guard came up and what he, song was it that's huh? what you gotta do why, why are you getting stressed out yo i'll be telling you you know what i tell these girls i tell these girls i'll say you're being that girl right now uh -huh. and they're like what what do you mean like i just try to yeah. how can i intelligently communicate to this person that they're being whacked i'm just picturing this this what this white lady like actually she was, she was latina huh no. what yeah, song was like, it she was latina yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, latina? was it bad bunny what, what it was it, bad bunny what made it worse is she didn't have a mask she, she, she's like all up in my face and i'm like yo no one has a mask. No now. one has a mask. Fuck away from me. <laughs> <laughs> Never still trust them with a mask. Never. <laughs> we, in, we in the fourth quarter. <laughs> yeah, we're no one's wearing masks right but now. Still, I'm, I'm about still, to hit the game I'm with a shot. Like, I got to have my mask on. What song was it there? I forgot what it was. was, it, it, was a, it was a Latin song. Yeah. I mean, of course it was. I'm not saying that. Of course requests are annoying and people would be annoying. But it's like I have so many more victories than I do 
those shitty interactions that like why am I I don't have to share those all the time and I think that's what bored that's when people are bored with DJing and shit they're the ones that are out here like complaining it's like dude no no one's showing you love aren't they because if they were showing you love <laughs> then you wouldn't be so fucking angry you know mm-hmm. it's like oh what can I do so I can get people to fucking hit this like button or let me can I how can I look like the coolest motherfucker you know oh, what I'm gonna play that. your song I still might play Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme. I don't give a fuck. Like, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm just telling you. Like, I'm crossing over to where I you like, and I'll say this to myself for a former self. Like, I'm crossing over from when I used to care about being the best in the room, mm-hmm. and it, it's it, like that got me to a point. Right. And then that also stopped my growth because I just couldn't be comfortable being myself because it was just like, what? I gotta be a DJ and like. I don't, you know, it's like it's a, a lot of mental for me. So more, most recently, I've just took all that pressure away. And like when I'm about to DJ, like I, I thought about it way so I overthought DJing way so much that now I've like tried to free myself from it. And those that's why I'm saying like it helps watching people just play and not worry about what they're playing and just like having fun. Like I forget about that sometimes. And sometimes I'm like too worried about looking cool for crooked, you know, like, nah, man, I should be fucking you just respect, you know, I should be free, feel free to do whatever yeah, I, mean, I want. It's hard to live in that. Cause you know, you want to impress your peers and, yeah. and be like that. But man, I freed myself. Uh, like when I did the rebel three styles, I made it to the finals a couple times. And like, I was just way too in my head. Like didn't have fun. Like I was just like, I want people to look, think that I'm cool versus I'm like, yo, let me just fucking be creative. Yeah. And, look, looking you know? cool is like, the worst shit to me, man. Yeah. I, I think just do your fucking thing. Right. Like, look you'll, like look, you'll look cool doing your fucking. Thing. Yeah, totally. look like an animal. Look like a savage. Is that's how you look? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, just, it's, it's gonna, gonna be what it is. I'm gonna tell you though. It gets hard. Like, and this is me over. I'm telling you, this is me overthinking. Yeah. It. Like, if I travel with Wiz and shit, and I do an after party, and Wiz is gonna be there. Like, Wiz don't want to listen to some of the. Like, I'm not gonna mention artists, but like, Wiz don't want to hear that. You right. know. Uh, so, well, here's a we good. Could, we could bleep it no, out. Here's, no, here's a good. <laughs> like, I, I kind of want to know. Well, I'll take well out. here's a good Kanye era. You don't have to take it out. Kanye era. You yeah. Know, when right. you know Wiz was dating Amber, Amber was around. Right. But oh. Kanye definitely had hot songs at the moment. Like I couldn't like but, even. But you ain't pa- gonna you ain't gonna drop Theraflu or nothing. No, like we're that. in Paris <laughs> or exactly or Theraflu exactly. <laughs> um, and so that those those got a little tricky because like I want to crush the club, right. but I want to make sure that. Wiz's DJ isn't out there just playing fluff. Yeah. You want to make sure Wiz's DJ is playing like what Wiz wants to hear and some like G shit or whatever it may be for him. And so I, th- those times got, I got way into my head about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got a question. When you did when you did the after parties and stuff mm-hmm. and you was on tour with Wiz, mm-hmm. were you responsible for your own flights and stuff? No, like, no, no. They would wait for you? You had your own tour who, bus? Who would wait for Well, me? I'm saying like I've heard from other DJs who are on the road that they have to handle their own flights. So oh. like, so sometimes that the tour has to keep keep it right, moving. Right. Uh, like you just got to find a flight and meet up with them in the next yeah, city. That that has happened. Or yeah. like, you know, you have homies that'll drive you to the next city. Or they'll wait. Sometimes they'll, they'll wait. They'll wait for you. Like, no, it'll be a bus call. So it really is determined on the bus call. Right, right. That's like what the I'm bus will leave about, at 3 a.m. Yeah. or 2 a.m. But normally if if I have to figure that out and it's too hard, like... Are you hooking those those gigs up or is no, or they do it? They do it. Like I'll be honest, this is weird. This is this is something I like to say, and I say this really like I rarely and not because I'm like a superstar DJ, but I rarely had to book myself. Like it just happens. It's just happening. That is, is pretty rare because I know a lot of Must DJs. Nice. Have, a lot Must of DJs nice. they nice, work with huh? artists, man. <laughs> they have to like black and book their own black after parties, yellow. kind of set up their own shit. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, Outside I mean, of the tour, I could go harder, I guess. And uh, but look, did it help that Wiz was partying with you? Yeah, but he wouldn't always show up, so I'd have to help. You know, I would sometimes set up my like if I go to Tampa or something. Yeah, I would just call Koo and just be like, "Hey, I'm gonna be in town. Let me know." Right, and that you know something easy as that, something that maybe Wiz will pop out, Wiz or another. It definitely there's like definitely parts where it gets hard. Like, can I book this? Well, Wiz might have one. But there's a well, good there's a good leverage you being Wiz Khalifa's yeah. DJ though, right? Because it's yeah. like you don't have to. And kind and kind of that Wiz that Wiz run was kind of going on to like. Seven years, like a seven years. I mean, it's still, it's still going. I like yeah, didn't yeah, yeah. exploit him as much as I like. If I would have known what I do now, like I might have been a little bit more superstar DJ dude. But like I was just a young dude, like living my fucking dream out, dude. Like I was doing what I watched, you know, my heroes do, like Spit Kickers tour and all that shit. Was like when I, I had a chance to be up there, like so for me, you know, I. I I'm a better DJ than a businessman. You also, know? that was I'll the beginning that. of social media. Right, it wasn't happening. Was right. that twenty ten? Twenty ten, yeah. 2010. It just started. I mean, we just had this. Uh, we were talking about this earlier before we were recording. But I was like, imagine if we had social media like nah. twenty years ago. I'd either be bigger <laughs> than I am or canceled. 
you know like yeah kind of, <laughs> you're right because right. I, I really, right. like honestly like I was in the first <laughs> I love how you like that. 2010 was the first Red Bull 3 style in the US and I made it to the finals and like if I I don't know if I like yeah, I would have been canceled, I think, man. You think so? I, yeah, 100%. <laughs> I, I mean, people are, I mean, people are fucking We was wildin', bro. No, nah, we yeah. were wild. But we there was, was there were words, there were words that weren't allowed, you know, Yo. aren't allowed now than they were. Like, when IG you, stories? Like, oh imagine that wow. in like 2007, nah. bro. Yeah, imagine Six? like fucking mm-hmm. spring break. Like, period, like that was the mentality oh. for us, 90s, 2000s, like. Spring break was its I mean, own the, thing. Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of me too going on. Yeah, actually, Girls Gone Wild was a fucking st- uh, close. Yeah, it was, on a fucking it was actually, a fucking commercial. Actually, yeah. actually, these younger DJs, they're a lot more professional and tame than we were. I think they're like way more professional and tame than we were coming uh, up. But they just they, uh, they grew up in it. Not, so they, not they DJing just, wise, but maybe the like social media. Yeah. Oh, social media. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're yeah. I don't know, man. Because some of them are so like, I'm, I don't want to say nothing. <laughs> I mean, say they're like really conservative and like nerdy, and they, you know, they they're like, you know, they they approach it very professionally. And we were just kind, of, we were wilding the fuck out. At some <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. two thousand, we were wilding out. Yeah, yeah. I'm I over mean, here collecting Pokemon cards yeah. and shit. I mean, this one, come on, man. You know, you was <laughs> we was all wilding. <laughs> out. No, he was a we was missing flights. <laughs> yeah. This motherfucker was falling asleep while he's DJing I and mean, shit. I had a, I had a fucking heart attack. You know what I mean? I yeah, like, you had a heart attack. Was definitely, I was definitely not doing shit I was supposed to do. Imagine if you had social media then when <laughs> you were going through all that. I mean, I've seen some shit on the tour bus, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Of course, yeah. <laughs> like, this motherfucker wanted to hear all boys. that. I want to know. Do you want to hear all that? They were them boys. I got I got, we get them boys. Where did that song come from? Right? Uh, someone said it. Yeah. Someone said it on the tour I bus. got a real uh, sensitive question. Mm-hmm. When you're DJing for an artist mm-hmm. and you have, and there's a TV show, mm-hmm. there's a festival, there's the tour, and then maybe there's club gigs. What? How do you decide the rates for all of this? I'll be honest with you. Um, I probably, like if you were to, all right, so this is a good conversation. Right. So let, let me put it in perspective. I, I know nothing about this. Let me put it in perspective I, for you. And I would not know how to negotiate this with yeah, you kinda like, someone uh, I came up sorry, with, right? Let me put it in perspective. Right, yeah. At some point, somebody who's just in his, uh, like just working for him comes into the picture, right? And they handle that. They handle the, like, trust me, man, this is very, it's, it's not super sensitive, but it's like, you got to look at the bigger picture when you're thinking about it. Like if you're literally just talking about money, then people like then then talk about money. So let me just give you an example. And I'm just throwing numbers in there. These yeah. aren't real. You got to organize your thoughts. So yeah. you look like so you say, organize. well, I'm just I'm just trying to like go into it. So let's just talk about Wiz DJing for an artist. You probably would be surprised at what what DJs get paid. But then you got to look at like imagine Migos gets $300,000. For, they got to split into three and then a manager and then a light guy and then a front of house guy and then the security guard. So, you know, Wiz told me once one time he was like, my, I'm happy with what my takeaway is. You get what I'm saying? So I don't know what the numbers are, but say Wiz booked a show for 150,000. He might only walk away with like 50,000 mm-hmm. or less because of all the breakdowns. Right. Right. So if I were to say to you and I'm just throwing this number out there, I made 100,000 last year with Wiz. People in your brain, some people might be like, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. But if you look at the amount of this, right? If I, because most people be like 100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. But technically when you add up all the days, it's like three months. Like you ain't working 52 weeks of touring, right? Of course not. You're working like maybe three or four months. So technically you're making 100K in like four months, but it's broken out throughout the year. Yeah. Um, So like after, like, dude, I didn't, I wasn't a good, I'm going to say this like for the podcast, I wasn't a good businessman because I'm nice over being like, I'm about the dollar, right? I saw someone tweet the other day, they were like, never do free gigs. And I was like, well, that wasn't my experience. I did a lot of free gigs that ended up opening up, you know, and I get like, and I had a successful career, so you can't tell me that I'm fucking wrong. It's the arrogance that they tweet. Yeah. Like, or it's the arrogance that we hear it in because sometimes it could just be like, you, there's no emotion in text, you know, but we're hearing it maybe as they're... Yeah, people. maybe they're looking in the mirror like, you know, um, never do free gigs. <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But, but, but we hear it like, <laughs> right, yo, right. never do free gigs. <laughs> yeah. You know, and yeah. we're... <laughs> well, you know, another conversation that people have are when veteran DJs, they want to talk about young DJs, be like, don't undercut people. And, and I get the sentiment. 
I completely I understand. I think young DJs should be on it. I mean, well, they this is what I'm saying. So, are. like, if you if you laid it out in, to a young DJ, be like, listen, man, if you really want to keep it real, you take this fucking twelve dollar an hour job and you really work on DJing, or you know what, we'll give you free drinks at a hundred dollars if you DJ all night for those MP3s you didn't buy. You can't tell yeah, yeah. someone that, right? Mm -hmm. And a matter of fact, if you are mad that someone's undercutting people, then you are putting them in your category. You know what I'm saying? Like right. you said, like I'm not. You aren't. You aren't what these other DJs are. Mm -hmm. So I don't even put myself in that category. Like I'm not, if, if I'm mad about someone undercutting me on a price wise, then I'm not good enough then. Right. Cause they're going to pay you what you're worth. Um, so, but, just, there, but there are dudes that are peers of ours that they, they, they do undercut, but then they give off this like social media thing that they're killing it. Right. And when, mm -hmm. when we, I know behind the scenes, I'm like that dude, I mean, he took an L on, I'm, Half of his gigs in the tour. You I know mean, what I'm saying? Just hearing the part, like what people get paid in Vegas is like, it's yo, it's a, is it's, it, a, is it, it hard to like swallow? Pause. I mean, it's not because like <laughs> I've been DJing for a while. Yeah. You know, yeah. swallow. Yeah. 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 He worked on that. You're, 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 you're saying that you're saying that the rates are so low for some of these DJs. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying, surprised. I'm I'm like I'm surprised because I'm like like these are making a lot of money, but also at the same time I'm not surprised because the amount of like I was talking to Nugget about it. Yeah. Like people bitching about three hundred dollars to DJ. Right. He was like, that rate almost hasn't changed in fifteen years, no. right? But how many DJs have there been from fifteen years ago until now? A uh, probably hundreds. Yeah. Times a billion more DJs. Right. Motherfuckers just DJing now. Wiz was a DJ for a while. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, look, man, get it how you can. And what what other people are telling you may not apply to you. And that's like, just like, I hear these dudes that I like look up to and are my peers that are just like fucking angry and just like yelling at everyone on the internet about DJing. And I'm like, my favorite DJs don't do that. You know. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite DJs don't like like why are you putting that you have a private gig that night like yeah yeah what what, what? what? <laughs> I mean gig. yeah it's it's just one of those things where like I gotta step oh. away from the Twitter cause I'm like I don't need to be saying these things and I'm honestly I'm creating like a bad no nah, but you did the right air. thing the fact that you called the dude the next day like I'm yeah, I'm yeah. kinda mentoring this young kid and he there's things that he does and I'm just like fuck but I'm like if I'm not here to help him and tell him and explain this, then I'm just going to be the dude that's going to be, I can't believe these young guys. Well, like, if no one fucking told them, then how can you even be mad about that? You know, right, right. you got to have, like, someone, yo, I've had great mentors, right? I'm sure you may have, and we all mm -hmm. may have, you know? And it was easier to have mentors because, like, we wanted to become students, but people don't want to be perceived students anymore, like, here. They just want to be like, I'm lit, I'm in the game, like, all right, <laughs> I mean, it, it's one of those things for me, like it did like a bad opener with that kind of like the attitude. And the thing is, like, I don't blame him for the attitude. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, but for me, like that kind of attitude, it just fucks up my whole night because right. I got to recover mm -hmm. and I shouldn't be that sensitive. Right. But I think we all are Dude, more sensitive than we would like to admit. But that does fuck up my night. And it does take it takes me. It, there's either a couple things. It's funny because my homie was there. And he was like, yo, you, I, that was the probably, the, and he usually critiques me. Right. He's like, that was the best set I ever heard you. He's like, you got to DJ angry more because mm. he knows I was upset. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But like, I don't want to DJ like that. You know, right. you feel right. me? Like, right. Right. but it's just one of those things to me where like I had to call him up because in the end I'm like, yo, I don't want to be that dude. That's the better thing to do. Thank I don't, you for I that. just Thank don't, I don't want to be that dude who just, in his mind is the headliner and who's putting this motherfucker in his place because right. that's not what it was. Right. That's why I had to talk to him and be like, look, this is where I'm coming from. Right. Let me know where you're coming from. And where right. he was coming from is like, I need to do my thing. I want to also, I want to kill it. I too. mean, where he's coming you know? from probably it was also like, I have no mentors. Like I have no one that really like taught right. me that shit. Yeah. You know? And I was just like, yo man, like, you know, I talk to motherfuckers about you and everyone has this negative thing to say about how mm. you open. See, I love how honest you were there. You know though. what I'm saying? That's and hard. he's like, really? And I'm like, yeah. And mm. I'm the only asshole who's going to tell you mm. to your face. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. That motherfuckers are talking about you. <laughs> right. And he's like, well, what should I do? And I said, well, 
Do you ever go out and support other DJs <laughs> in the city? You. Oh my God. Uh, do you Thank ever you. go out and support other DJs right. in the city? He right. said, no. And right. I said, well, maybe you should start going out right. and listening to how other motherfuckers are DJing, right. how they listening open. how they're opening, yep. right. listening to the catalog that they play, right. buying them a drink and being cool with these motherfuckers. I'm and then and then you'll start realizing it's not about you and your come up and what you're doing. It's about you navigating with these group of friends and these people and, through the industry. And you know? what is and, and so it all comes back to culture. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm telling you, it all comes back to culture because I see that with uh, with young people. They'll hit me up and be like, yo, I just turned 18. I could DJ in the clubs now. Do uh, you have any advice? And I was like, or, or if people ask me like, yo, how did you become a, a DJ? I said, I, I, was, I was a fan. And I went right. and support, right. and I went and supported it, right? Right. And that's the part that people are missing, and that's what I'm saying. It's culture. Of co- how many of us like went to watch other DJs? Like exactly. that's where I learned totally. everything. And then you make you make friends and mentors in the process because and all that, right? Because you're because the DJ saw you support. Yeah. Like I'm not, you know. I so uh, Tuesday blend. You guys know that? Yes. Yeah. 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 So Tuesday blend. I'm gonna do the next Tuesday blend uh, in December. It's, that's with the hip Tines and all yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Tines. Yeah, shout yeah, to, I mean shout to, so this is like what's funny Hippo about aesthetics. Hippo aesthetics. Yeah. 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 me yeah. being yeah. in Vegas is funny because people will look at me and be like alright so you're high profile so what are you trying to do here I'm like nope I need to be with the culture yeah. right so I'm fucking with Tines and all these like people who are like mm-hmm. basically helping all the upper echelon cats um and that's where my entry point is here is that I, I've moved to so many cities whether it was Portland Minnesota um, is that, yo, if you go with the culture, like that's the one thing I noticed about Vegas. I know this is going a different way now, but yeah, like, yeah. Um, local, there's local people who enjoy the top shelf. And then I believe that there's like a Vegas culture that doesn't really get looked at, mm-hmm. but I feel like that could be a two ticket thing at some point. Like yeah. I want to see some ill local shit. Cause I never even knew the arts district was something right. like just having a piece of pizza there with, with all the art. I was like, man, this is definitely different from this strip sort of thing. So um, well, the downtown scene in Las Vegas is really, yeah, it's, yeah. it's really growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then there's even like a new wave of kids that are like taking ca- taking mm-hmm. over like some of these parties like uh, Cricket. Uh, the Sims, yeah, Cricket, shout mm-hmm. to Cricket. Yep. Nick uh, Lopez. Nick Lopez. You want to say Sim City? Sim City, yeah. those kids. Mm-hmm. I haven't met them yet, but Sim City is like, it's. Who- who Sims is it like Nick and them or no? No, no. 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 Sim City no. is these kids and they it's an R and B party mm. and it's gotten so big. I don't know when they started it. Probably yeah. 2018. 2018. They started this R and B party. Right now, there's like I don't know 1,500 to 2,000 kids going to this party. Where's this at? And it's at Area 50. Yeah, Area oh, 15. Oh, area right, 15. Right, right. They did uh, the Brooklyn Bowl. Right. Is so they've but they they're like they're bringing they're the only I think they're the only like group of motherfuckers and the only venues bringing in. Like Keisha Cole, mm-hmm. right. Bryson Tiller. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think they brought oh, in yeah. Mario. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, they're the only ones bringing these R&B artists. And they're like Sick. 22, 23. They're young, they're so young. and they, they created yeah. this ill-ass right. fucking movement. Yeah, because they didn't have, right. I think they didn't have anywhere really to go yeah. like, where they can feel like that's right. theirs. So they built this shit, and it, was, it started off small. It started like in a warehouse and shit like that. And then just gradually got bigger and bigger. It's crazy because they hit you up to to man. run with them. Man. Yeah, this is a long time ago. They hit me up and they're like, "Yo, we can only pay you one fifty for the first party." And I I just never responded to that text. Damn. And then now they're bigger you could have been life. part of that. I, know, I could have right? been part of that. It wasn't big enough for you. No, <laughs> I time. just missed it. I just missed it. It was like randomly. He texted me like at that thing was like four in the morning after I saw him at Commonwealth, and I just never responded. And I fought, and I looked back because I found his uh, Instagram the other day. And I went to my messages, and then there was just a full conversation happening, and I just never replied. Yeah, yeah. Do you guys have any? You could have been a part of that moment. It's uh, well, I had DJ, I had Dave Chappelle ask me to DJ for him at Caesar's Palace. Uh, and you, what'd you say? I couldn't do it. Damn. Why? Wow. I couldn't have somebody filling for me at Caramel. So wait, wait. Tell the whole story. He heard you at Light, right? Yeah, he heard me at Light. He came, hung out with me in the DJ booth. He was like, "Yo, man, I love it. I love this." And then, like the next day, one of the managers hit me up. Was like, "Yo, Dave Chappelle wants you to DJ with him." At Caesar's oh Palace. God, man. At the you time, been, you could have been DJ Trauma. I, I could have. And at the time, I, <laughs> I was crazy. DJing at Caramel. It was like a lounge. You're the uh-huh. you're the oh, joke. Like, you're the punchline. And I now. could not find the manager <laughs> wouldn't let anybody cover for me that night. Dude, Dude they didn't, I would have I would have not showed up. Yeah, I that's got some like zero understanding. The manager I was under like contract like, and I had just moved out here. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is right before you probably walked away from the millions. So uh, it was, yeah, yeah. definitely. That was right before Dave the Chappelle show. No, it was like during the Chappelle show. Oh, wow. Never. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Man, I don't feel that bad about SimCity no more. I know, right? <laughs> Damn. 
I have, no. a, I have a question though. Yeah. If if you let's say you you ran with Chappelle, yeah, and let's say he was like, I want you to quit and run with me. Is that scary, or you would have just done it? It would have been scary. To, I would have thought about it, but I think I would have done it. Yeah. You would have done it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what you, that's what you did. You, though, like, that's what you did, so though. So 2010 was a weird moment for me, right? I was the number one afternoon radio guy in Pittsburgh. I won the Red Bull Three Style in Pittsburgh. So to me, it really like set, like, all right, you know, and I was against, like, Digital Dave and Zimmy and Nugget. It was a good, good. Uh, and so when I had to choose leaving Wiz, nobody really knew who was, Wiz was. Honestly, it was no hype. So when I asked people, I'd be like, yo, so I got this opportunity to leave to go with this guy, Wiz Khalifa. They're like, what's a Wiz Khalifa? Literally, <laughs> that's what they were saying. And, um, so he wanted you to leave. and Well, you ha- he wanted you to go on tour with him. Yeah, they were like, listen, Wiz signed to Atlantic. Nobody knows it yet. We have this song called Black and Yellow. We're going to do our first tour bus That was tour. before Say Yeah? Uh, no, was this was after Say Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. After Say Yeah, okay. Um, and this was 2010, and he's like, well, nobody knows that Wiz signed to Atlantic yet. We're going to go on our first tour bus tour. So I was, I remember sitting in my studio. So I was with iHeartRadio at the time. It wasn't iHeart. There was Clear Channel. I was number one afternoon guy. I was the music director And there. you had to be there every day. Yeah. I'm You're on the radio every well, day. Yo, well, I, yo can I just tell you week. this? I So since I've been touring with Wiz in 2010, I've been on a radio station pretty much ever. I've had radio stations allow me to do my whole show from the road. So in Minnesota, if I was in Korea with Wiz, I'd be like, yo, it's Bonix I'm in Korea. Oh, it's and pre-recorded. Then, uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. everything's pre-recorded. So I would, like, go and interview Koreans, and, like, I was doing, like, a cool fucking show, but, right. like, um, it was cool I was able to do both, basically, is what I'm saying. Mm. Um, and so... When I chose to leave to go with Wiz, like I remember crying though because I had benefits. Remember, I had a heart attack later that year and didn't have benefits. So I had benefits. I had a salary. I was number one. This that's someone's end goal. Like I want to be a music director for a top twenty-five market radio station. And I remember being there and being like crying and talking to my sister. She was like, "Risk big, reward big." And I was like, "Okay, let me keep that in mind." And the really, it wasn't that I didn't know what the answer was. It was accepting it. And I was about to choose this thing that, like, I mean, I could name you a, a couple rappers from that Double uh, XL cover for that freshman class that aren't really doing many things anymore, mm-hmm. you know. And so, just even being with someone like Wiz, I could name some rappers that I'd be like, damn, that would suck to be touring with. But like, Wiz is the we god, and he's a cool motherfucker. And weed, like, he took a lot of L's for weed in 2010, always getting caught, you know. Yeah, he got arrested. And now weed is like weed, you know. He yeah. always getting arrested and doing all that. So he like really took the fucking. He was a scapegoat for weed, and now weed is so like. Yeah. It's legal. It's fucking casual. You what, know what, what in your head made you feel like I got to take this chance? Because it's hard. I'm, to, oh, because it's, it's hard to walk away from when you're when you're on top. I mean, when, no, when you're on top, right. you're not gonna. Who the fuck is gonna walk right. away from that? But I think yeah. that's brilliant. Like that's why for this is why that the, there's these pivotal moments of like, listen, if I went and DJed for eight hours and practiced my ass off, I could probably just get back here and do cool stuff and take videos and all this shit too. Yeah. I want new experiences, man. Mm-hmm. I am trying to gain new experiences through DJing and I see peers trying to hold on to a look, literally just a look, but they don't have anything else. Or the, yo, it's, I'm, I want to help push, and it's, maybe it's not that serious for some people, but it's serious for me as like a person that's like, wants to just move forward, but how do you let go? I just tweeted it yesterday, like my values are changing, bro, like completely. And that's why I say again, like put me in the, I'll be an opener because if I look, if I was like living in like a city like Pittsburgh or something and as I get older, I would just literally cake off trying to make six to 10 gigs. You know, like you could have two peak hours in one night, like, yo, because 40 year olds, how am I going to convince my 40 year old friends to come check me out to DJ like on a Friday, Saturday (laughs) night, right? So if I was someone that didn't want to be out late, I would start a six to 10 fucking club culture. Put me on at nine. Let me kill it at 10. And then because there's a bunch of 40 year olds that want to go out, but not till two or party with 20 year olds. Right. So I but. I'm trying to just. I'm in some a whole other thing, man. Like, I'm just in a whole other <laughs> it's thing. The right weed, now. baby. Yeah, it's the weed. I told you, like, I went Khalifa on. for Kush. I did like an ayahuasca trip earlier this year. I've been changing my diet. I've been like going to to like uh, yoga and shit here in the cities. Like, I've experienced so much great shit through DJing that I feel like I have to be able to move it forward in a way that doesn't have this angst, mm-hmm. that doesn't have this angry like I know what's right and you know because that's what it's becoming and. Like you said, man, I don't, I, you shouldn't be 
held in the same conversation as a lot of these cats that have slots here, man. Like, show you well, what... The, the thing is, like, I've been doing this a while, like all of us have been mm-hmm. doing it. But it's like, I think what I see, what I see a lot of DJs doing right now, I don't want to do it. Mm-hmm. And I see, like... That, that's exactly where I'm at. And the thing is, it's not because I'm better than them mm-hmm. or anything like that. Mm-hmm. I just don't want to do it. So, like, I, I'm just not... It's not authentic to me. You, I mean, yeah. it's that wanting a new experience. I yeah, think yeah. that's what that I'm is. I'm just it's not like that wanting. social media dude. Like, I'm, I'm not going to... I'm we not... About this, I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm not going to work on that social media presence. You, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to be in the booth filming selfie videos. Yeah, yeah. You're not going to jump on stage. Jump on stage. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not going to do... <laughs> but the thing is, like, you know, that's working in Vegas right now. Right. But what I'm looking at instead, like, since you, you've been talking about the culture, I'm looking at what's missing. Right. In the scene, right? Well, I told someone like Spider you know? Tech. Yeah, you know, I've been talking to Spider Tech. I mean, I'm like, yeah, you, you should, you should have a party in Vegas. Like, period. We could support it. Maybe Hardeen will or whatever. Like, that's what I'm looking for here. Like, I get the the big shit's happening, and I and I'm glad it is. And shit, I wish I was up there doing some of these things. You know, like I came up with Tay James, and I love seeing all my friends like, like killing it. But again, like you said, I just am trying to figure out how I can give. That's why I'm like happy that people. Did you know the people who really did Twitch and made it special? They yeah. fucking did it and they did it. Focused mm-hmm. on it, and that's about putting yourself in another process. Is it easy for you to just keep getting booked? Certainly. Is it harder for you to put yourself through a like, hey, we want to do something new and pay you not what you think you're worth? And da 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 da. Yeah. And at that moment, I'm not saying it was a pivotal moment in your career or not, but like, instead of just being like, well, the money wasn't good, that's where like, where it could have went another direction, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Nah, I, I feel just, you. I just fell asleep. I never replied. I <laughs> fucked up. Nah, it's cool. Are you talking about Sim? Sim said, yeah. It's, and now it's haunting me because he brought it <laughs> I'm about to say, you still think about that? No, nah, because I just found out uh, like a week ago or something like that. Yeah, um, so. I was talking to him about it, to Cricket, and I was just like, yo, I just realized something. And then I told him, he's like, yeah, you fucked up. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, you dropped I the mean, ball. But the, the thing is, like, you fucked up, but right. it's like you're, you're earning your... No, You're literally I, earning your stripes another I w- way. I would, I would, what was of opportunities going to come? Yeah, I wouldn't change the the way my career path went. Yeah, but you wouldn't have the perspective that you have now as a DJ no. if you was like if I started DJing and I hopped on to something that blew up, I might never become a better DJ mm-hmm. because I'm not I'm not really in. You didn't the, go through the struggle. I'm not struggling booze. as much, and that's the thing about DJing yeah, yeah, yeah. is the more uncomfortable more uncomfortable situations you're in, the better of a DJ you I mean, become. The, I mean, you know? it's just like the better person you are, man. Like yeah. the better everything you are. That's where I'm at. Is that this is why it's funny for me because I could I don't want to say I could cruise because it's not that easy. If I wanted to be percep- perception as like I'm busy here's Thursday Friday Saturday night, it's like no. I want to put myself through some other process as a DJ. We shouldn't be afraid of that as DJs. And guess what? There are some cats that are still doing exactly what they've been doing for 20 years, and that's that's beautiful. Whether it was me DJing for five people in the basement or 50,000 people wherever we were, you know, Red Bull Culture Clash, it's the same feeling. It really is, man. It's like for me, I really, I know people don't look at it like it because they want to be the man or whatever. Like, I truly look at it as that I'm providing a service for these people. Once you are bigger than the music, then I feel like that's when you start becoming miserable and shit. Like, it's a service for me. And I know that other people don't look like it. They're like, you know, I'm an artist and you, I'm curating this shit. Like, all right. You know what I'm saying? The bartender still serves fucking Coors Light to someone. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter, <laughs> no matter how seasoned these motherfuckers go out. Like, and the bartender, I'm not. The bartender, you know, I don't ask them what they want to make for me. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah there, there's a there's a quote. I was reading uh, an article, an interview that you had for Minneapolis, some, mm-hmm. something in Minneapolis, mm-hmm. and uh, you you answered a question. I just really loved it what you said. So I'm gonna read some yeah, of it, please. But I kind of want to talk about how you ended it. Sure. All right. So you said, uh, you know, people ask how I got into DJing because you know it's because I like it. You know, people say they want a DJ to be famous. Or be a photographer to get backstage, and that's the problem. I like this shit. That's the main ingredient. The rest falls <laughs> from there. If you like it, everything is pure and authentic. Right. Then, once you're good at something, you have confidence. When you graduate, employers will dictate if you have a job or not. But you have a skill set no one can take from you. Mm-hmm. That's the second ingredient to have a skill that no one can dictate or take away. When you're good, you're undeniable. Mm-hmm. You need ego to get into it. And then once you're in, lose the ego to survive. Great line. You're not going to get your way 
but how you react will determine your longevity. But add this, no risk, no reward. We said this recently, if you don't take a risk, you'll never be heard. But I loved what you said. Mm. You need an ego to get into it because we all need to believe. Right. You mm. know, that ego, we need to believe that we can make it. Yeah. Right. You know, even when everyone's saying, like, you ain't going to make it. Right. You, you need to psych yourself out and That's be like, right. I am going to make it. That's right. Yeah. But then once you're there and you're in, you got to lose the ego to survive. Right. And uh, I love that line. You know, That's a great fucking line. You're not yeah. going to get your way. But how you react will determine your longevity, and that's 1, completely one hundred percent true. It, it gives yeah. me right? goosebumps hearing that because yeah. I think about, I think about that man, and that's that's where I am. Is that you know a lot of DJs? I try to like share this radical love thing, and I know there's a lot of things that separate DJs and and philosophies and or political agendas and or why should we be playing this or not? But like man, I just want to let DJs know out there right now this is what i want to say to you You are so blessed to be able to do this for your career there's someone out there that's shoveling shit for a living there's someone out there who does like and you are downloading mp3s for free yeah and you are out here trying to make it sound like that you that people are like disrespecting this like no i've been through that same journey bro and i'm happy to be here matter of fact i've been on a I've been on hella stages, man. I've been through... I'm not the best. That's what I love now. Before, I used to just want to be like, I want to be the best. And now I'm just happy to exist in this in this space. And I want to be able to impact anyone who's willing to listen. You know what I'm saying? So I, I appreciate it. Like, no, no, that, was, a, that, that quote, was a great, yeah. ego, great quote. Yeah, yeah. yeah Hip hop is ego. You know what I'm saying? It is. But then, you know, some of these... The people who end up on the other end is... You know, Jay Z not wearing any jewelry. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's like everyone like getting to a place that's like more about love and trying to hold each other up. That's why I want to remind you, like, if I get any messages out there, remember though, this is a culture, and treat it like a culture, and treat it like how you want to. Like I said, if they wrote a book about it, how, what, what what would be? How would they write you like into this? For me, if it was Pittsburgh from Pittsburgh shit, doing like underground clubs to the radio to touring with Wiz Khalifa, having relationship with Mac and doing all the shit. Like, dude, I'm on, I don't know if you guys ever listened to kids, Mac Miller's, Yeah, uh, you know, it. I'm on that shit. I did scratches and they mm -hmm. posted it on Spotify and they put my name on it. And I'm just like, that's it. Did they pay me for that? Fuck no. Oh, no. And should, I'm, you know, like, should I have said, yo, fuck you, pay me Mac? Of course not. And so I know that a lot, like the, I said this tweet the other day and it's funny cause it's true, but the number one, I, I see most successful DJs now, like their number one quality is sarcasm. Don't mm -hmm. don't follow that lead. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Don't fucking follow that lead because they are allowed to be sarcastic because they're in a position to fuck around and get paid for it. But young people aren't in for that. And I will remind some of these dudes who you can only catch now in like top level shit is that y'all started in the basement too. So like at least have some of what you're putting out available for for the for the for the hood available for the people who can't afford it like put yourself available because you started in that spot too you know um so love, <laughs> love, radical love man coming from me right now how do you how do you feel about where you are in your dj career because I, you know hearing that quote right, right there's a lot of reflection in there right? right you know and uh and i think about that because i relate a lot to what you said right you know like you start with ego you leave it at the door but then also just like you're never gonna get your way. We right. never, are, right. you know. It's, I mean, I mean, no one gets 100 percent of what, but how you react, right, right, is is what really dictates how long you're in the game. Yeah, right. So, how do you feel about where you are in your career? So, I'll say this: I, I, I have the skill to be in all of these main rooms here. I know it, you know. Right. And, I, and I'm not there yet, but I'm also doing all these other things as well, like with Hardeen and some and some other things. So, mm -hmm. I would just say, look. Man, I'm so thankful because I've had, look, check it out. I've done the rapper DJ shit. I've traveled around the world. I've been on Saturday Night Live. I've been on David Letterman. I've been on all that shit. MTV, been in Korea, you know, playing in fucking Korea. We've been in Saudi Arabia saying, so what, we get drunk, so what, we smoke weed. And that shit is great. All of that's illegal there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Concerts were illegal there. So like... And, and I say this tongue in cheek, but like I've experienced shit that even my favorite DJs have never have, which is like tour around the world, going to South Africa and seeing someone wear a fucking Pittsburgh hat. Like what? You know what I'm saying? Being in a country called Malta. Have you ever fucking heard of Malta before? Sounds like, like an ice cream, man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, comma, comma. 
I got to do the radio thing, right? So in Pitts, like, so here's the part about radio. Like, I bet in 2007-ish, everyone who was in radio started getting out of it because, like, they were getting into this cool DJ world, right. which is cool. But I stuck with it. And people, even JCO is like, I don't even know why you're doing that, bro. Like, da-da-da-da. But here's, here's my other second part about writing a book in DJ culture, right? You could be the best DJ in your city, but if the record labels and the industry don't know who you are, then there's a limit there. Like, I, if, it, you know, like... It's kind of cool that if Drake comes in, he might hit Franzen up, right? Just because, like, that's, like, the relationship right. or whatever it may be. So that's what I want to say to, like, younger DJs is, like, now I added radio always knowing that, hey, I can get the customs. You know what I'm saying? The 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 drops. The custom yeah. drops. Yeah. I'm getting right. the drops. When the label, like, yo, when the Blueprint 3 tour was happening, they called me and said, hey, you were selected to open up for Jay-Z's Blueprint 3 tour. That didn't happen just because I, like, stayed in the basement and kept it real. That mm -hmm. happened because I put myself out there. So, as a, I've been on Hot 97. I've been on Power 106 for, like, a year. Um, I, I'm a heavy hitter. I've gotten to be on the radio in Portland, Minnesota. Um, Albuquerque, like... So I've experienced radio, and that's a whole other level of DJing, right? Right. And learning to DJ a live set clean and, and not fucking up. I was doing live vinyl radio sets. That's how old yeah, I am. it's different. Which is crazy. It's different. Comma, I, did, I got the club DJ experience, right? So I get all the whole, like... Request life and blah 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 blah. Yeah. You, you can't be messy on the radio. No, you got to no, be no, super no, clean. clean. You yeah. got to be tight. It's, it's yeah. pretty messy. <laughs> it gets pretty messy. Uh, but you're you're totally <laughs> right. But uh, and then, you know, I got to do the Red Bulls three style and like even though I didn't win that shit, that's how I got to be peers with like the Espinosas and Buck Rogers and the Boy Geniuses. Like these are some of my like good friends in the industry. You know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I feel like I had a really good encompassing DJ career. I'm cool. I've had my fucking fair share of great experiences. Right. Why would I be a hater? But um, it also tells me that there's a lot of mediocre DJing happening and that's acceptable. You know, <sighs> I, I have a take on this, please. I'll but, tell you, yeah, yeah. but it's not um, it's not completely like it doesn't have a full circle outlook on it. <laughs> no, Do you that's know good. what I'm that's saying? Good. It's a thought and process, right? But everything goes in phases. I'll just keep it broad and vague. But right. everything yeah. goes in phases right now. Right. And right. even right. now we're in the transitional period. Right. So a lot of clubs, they put a lot of value on... This is going to sound mono well, redundant from what I said before, right? Go ahead, just say it, and then we'll figure it out. Yeah. Right now it's a numbers game. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at numbers. They're looking at followers, they're looking at views, they're looking engagements, at analytics, right. engagements and everything like that. Right, right. So right now that brings value because after the pandemic of what we went through, that's to them a safe investment because I got the numbers to back up bringing this DJ in. But there's, there's homies that I know that that bought followers, you know, and and it, it paid off. And you know what I'm saying? So like it to me, I just don't want to do that. Right. I, no. I've never done that. It paid off for them, though. The it does. It does pay off because in the end, they're looking at the numbers because it's an investment thing. It's a corporate thing. Right. But right. the thing is, it's like the experiences start to get a little stale because everyone, these DJs aren't necessarily the innovative DJs who are pushing or taking risks. Right. But I think you know? the, the crowd expectation is different, too, as well. Like, like, what do you mean? Meaning, like, if if uh, like. I, I, Jay Crazy, we'll talk about Jay Crazy, right? right. Dude is young and he kills it, and mm -hmm. he's on the cut. But when he's cutting it up, and I've been in situations where like, other, like this audience, they don't know what he's doing because they're not hearing that on the radio anymore. It's not, you know what I'm saying? So like, the experience for the audience is a lot different. This is what I wanted to kind of insert here is that I have this weird theory about hip hop DJing, is that you, if you were a smooth DJ all night long in a hip hop setting. That's more background is as they now they want that disruption. Mm -hmm. Start, stop. -da 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 -da. That's it. Like because I've seen DJs just do clean blends all the way and it was almost boring. It was boring for that audience because they're used to it. So it's about how do we reprogram these audiences to have these expectations. Like if I, I remember being in Europe so many times where I thought I was killing it like you know, like being interactive and they're like, are you going to talk? Yawn. You know, you know, exactly. Well, they were like, because they wanted me to be like, yo, it's Wiz Khalifa's DJ Bonix from USA. Right. And I'm there like trying to DJ my ass off because that's where I came up from. So I just think that there's like a... Well, we, you know, another th way to say it is right now, mm -hmm. what's more important is that they have a host mm -hmm. for the night. So it's almost like they have a host for right. what's going on and that host is a showman. Which I'm not mad at. And the showmanship... 
uh, kind of the showmanship out like is has more value than the actual music and the DJing the itself, yeah. which you know? I'm also not mad about. Well, I'm not mad right, at that. Right, right, I understand right, right. it. Like I, understand. I totally get well, it. Well, that's what I'm you know? saying yeah. is that if you put one guy in there who's just like a smooth transition guy, cool. But if you put someone in there that is like, they're used to, like I'm look, looking at it like a local level on like mainly hip hop nights, man, because uh, is that there's a lot of disruption and they're used to it versus just like a super flow. The songs just go like, nah, you got to start that bitch over. You know, like, <laughs> nah, 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 nah. like bring that shit back. Cause that moment because uh, it's just, I think DJ's different now. I think it's, I think the expectations are different. They're used to it. Like if it was just like all clean blends, it's boring to them, which sucks. Cause you know, I like to hear clean, sh- you know, clean, clever DJing, but it's different, but I'm happy that there's other, like, it's cool that like, uh, on the record and shit is doing the back bus and bringing in like actives and scratch bastards mm-hmm. and all that shit. Like, yeah, yeah. I like for people to see that shit. And then seeing like a lot of the downtown type uh, Vegas cats, you know, going to the strip to see those things is pretty cool too, you know? Yeah. yeah. Which is it's cool. I um, mean, it's it's good. It's good to have you as a new addition into the, the Las Vegas you. scene. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm trying to figure yeah. it out. Like I want to do the dark, ding- I, like the shiny. Here's the people expect me to focus on the shiny shoot suit shit. I want to be a. I would rather fuck with the culture. You know, so I've had the gutter. Much. I've read, yeah, I know the gutter. The dirty Air Force Ones. That's where he Shit. wants to be. Dirty vans, man. It's the yeah. vans. <laughs> Yo, so uh, one last question. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, in, in your your pick of choice, mm-hmm. what what type of environment would do you like to DJ in? A festival, man. You know, a club, bar, stadium, private event, stadium, private event. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know what? I want to ask all of y'all this question. Mm. You answer first, and then we'll all go right. around. I mean, honestly, this is goes back to what I was saying before. Right. Is that I understand that I can make any piece exciting for me. You know? Mm. And that's, like, really how I look at it. Don't get me wrong. I get fucking nervous still, like, in front of huge crowds or, like... You still get nervous. That's what I was kind of yeah. wondering. Like, yeah, when you yeah. walk... Definitely. When, when it's, like, let's say you have to follow an act, and they're like, we're ready. And you obviously have to go on. You probably have to do like a five minute. Right. Uh, Sometimes. Set, cause I don't know? think I'm always I'm on, like and I'll just say this. This is being truthful because I don't want to put it out there like I know everything. I don't love all of what's relevant music right now. Right. Like I don't mm-hmm. it doesn't really resonate with me all like I get it. Like scrub the ground. Right. Cool. Like I'll play it and cool. But I'm not in my car like scrub the ground, you know, Uh and so it just depends, man. I'll be honest. You know what's like coming back into being cool? Like weddings. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> it is. It, it's I come, how he's like, weddings. It's, it's coming back Jules to being cool. Jules is going to love that. Jules is going to be like the <laughs> number one <laughs> Filipino. Jules, the, the what, what do we call him? The number one Filipino wedding DJ. Yes. And yeah. in, in, in uh, South California. Southern yeah, California. Southern California. Yeah. Think about that, man. It's like really focus on love and like having a good time and a moment, and then you can curate it. And then now people are like cooler music, so you have people playing Kate out of shit at weddings or whatever. But then pick, pick one, pick one that you had to pick. I mean, honestly, if I were to pick right now, out of all of that, uh, some real pothead shit going on over here. Damn, shit, man. Because like when if you do a festival right with like thousands of people there, you there's got to be something exhilarating at the end of it where you're like, holy shit! Well, so like, I'm, that was insane. I'm, I've DJed like mini festivals, but like for doing Wiz and doing a festival yeah. is fucking That's awesome. Different. That's, That's different. what I'm saying. You know, yeah. I love that man. Just to be able, like I'm telling you, there's something. I've been getting a lot of blessings because there's something about telling 50,000 people to make some fucking noise and then for them to give it back to you. Like, right. think about the energy exchange. Yeah, yeah. One, that's, 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 one to 50,000, right? That's a fucking feeling. But that's I, what I'm saying. I, I've like, been collecting those like for the last 14 years on the road, just collecting all those experiences. So, but I mean, you know what? I'm just going to take it right back to anything like a club or a house party or anything like, it doesn't matter to me, honestly. I love really? DJing. I love DJing. I lo- it could be on the radio. It could be, I love it. But I certainly could be doing more as a, like, like how I used to be in the gutter, like, you know, practicing or adding mm-hmm. all these routines. Like, I wish that I could be as fruitful with the routines and the videos and shit. But to me, that's not, I'm not getting, my ROI on that could be bigger. But, like, truthfully, I like being with people now. Like, I'm telling you, people is more important than the music to me now. Is that how can I make people feel good that's more important than me looking cool anymore. It's more important for me because look how fucked up this world is, man, is that music heals. Like, so there's something that I said recently and some people will have a hard time with it. Okay. So if you believe music can bring people together, are you music? 
because there's people out there who don't want to bring people together. There's people out here who are just like forcing their opinions to keep us divided, and that's not music, bro. So let's be music. You know nice. I think we'll end it there. Yeah, I think yeah that was good. good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, have you ever done the toad? The uh, combo. You done? So you? No, did. no. I'm work. I, I met someone recently. Like, so there's toad and combo. I don't know if it's the same thing. So, I'm wait, what is this? This, this is. Uh, why are you always asking some weird ass shit that I don't know about? DMT, <laughs> DMT thing, like. Uh, oh, toad. Yeah, yeah toad. It's like uh, I feel like he's done it. That's why I asked. Now him. it's funny that you say that because the the fact that you said that makes me even know more that I should be doing. Like, yo. I Call me weirdo, hippie shit, whatever. Like I went on like an ayahuasca trip earlier this year, and what uh, is that? What is the ayahuasca okay. trip? Wow, it's like a peyote kind of vibe. Okay, it's like a vine, like some Joshua tree shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, <laughs> some, like yeah, hallucination. Ba- type yeah, of vibe. like you know, um, it's dope. It, I'm like, and that's why I'm saying is that that's I'm, what he sound to me. He sounds like his mind got expanded in the last year and a half. No, it, and yep. that's why he he sounded. He that's sounds why, like he's been smashing some hippie chick. No, yeah, some crazy <laughs> shit. She fuck with his mind. Like, she, like <laughs> yeah, that's why I was just like, you ever done the toad? Because it just sounds like some shit that you've like. She had a bush and it changed my life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I love armpit hair. Yeah, I love armpit that's hair. That's why I, yo, she I, gave me some tea and I went. I struggle because I sometimes I feel like some of my message is so radical for people, like as far as like love and loving other people and all this shit. It's like it's really true, and that's why I mentioned like the sarcastic DJ shit because it's like some of these dudes are so lucky to have this platform, and instead of like really pushing like being inclusive like it's just them it's like ego still man and it's like mm-hmm. our, what happened into this world is that they wanted they want to we need to be a community again man and and so i'm just thankful man we see, need to be a community see you know? He, uh, you know if i didn't know like kind of not know his history this motherfucker like i would think he was captain like he's full of shit not you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know, like, no, but i know because i've actually I, i've seen you even on twitter and in the different cities that you've been you've done a bunch of charity events right and i remember like uh probably in minneapolis mm, the hoodies yeah yep. you you did a lot of stuff for the community and like i, I think even even when uh even when the, I think a radio station was closing or something, even when it was closing or if it, when it closed, you yeah, still went still ahead did. Yep, yep. and you held an event for like the community and there was nothing to get out of it except for you holding this event for the community and I did. because they look forward to it every year from that radio station and the radio station didn't exist right. and he still went ahead and organized it. Right. You know, I'm, and, well, so I'm working on since I don't live there. I'm working. Somebody hit me up. Yeah. Shout out to uh, DJ Hella Yellow from Austin. He reached out to me. He was like, "Yo, I want to do this," and that's the important part about this. And look, if this isn't your shit, then that's fine. But if you're such the man in your city and everyone loves you as a DJ, then like, what are you doing for your community? Right. Because that's where we need to be at, man. Like, that's where all our heroes were doing, man. Like. Uh, you know, like fucking headed for self destruction. Like, oh, that's that's why I, you know I was listening to fucking crazy, ratchet ass rap too growing up. But I also had other people that I listened to, and and just that whole common and Black Star, and like it really got me to be a little bit more self reflective. You want to you want to take the DJ shit to the native tongues era. So I just want to take <laughs> I just wanted like people to feel included the conscious, anymore. The conscious the DJ, conscious. just a little. I mean, look, I'm not. Miracle. Yeah, yeah, I'm not playing like that conscious shit. But I just like want people to like come back to being friendly. Like we we we, we didn't touch on this, but let's do it real quick. Yeah. Why wasn't people picking people up? when they saw him fall down at the Travis Scott shit. That's what I'm saying is that the mentality should be that if everyone knew that they could help others and be there to lift somebody up and help them, like, and we have to teach people, like, even in these panic modes, it's like, yo, people were falling, like, why weren't you helping them up? I wasn't there, like, so it could, may not have been easy, but, you know, everyone, it was a great example of just, like, hype beast at his fucking finest, and how do I even want to be a part of that anymore? Yep. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, help these people. They fucking are being trampled so you could get a t-shirt. I mean, I'm sure you know? those people helping, trying to help people, but... I don't know. I mean, you, there's a lot of articles that have been written about what kind of energy, like Travis Scott, because mm. um, he's, you know, th- these are young-ass kids. Yeah. Like, as we... It's horrible because we're seeing the ages of some of these kids that are being hospitalized yeah. and uh, yeah. the, the ones that passed away. Mm-hmm. And it's like, these are impressionable young kids. Mm-hmm. And their leader is Travis Scott. And so it's, it's hard enough if he, if he if he laid out an importance on safety and um you know in certain things this is what the articles are saying right. if he focused on the safety and this kind of this like looking out for each other with the crowd mm-hmm. 
at maybe the energy would have been different, but it's really this kind of chaotic rage. But cult following. And, right. it's, and it's not, it's directed at like the very people who are trying to keep everyone safe. So it's like, put a middle finger up to the security, put a middle finger up to all of this shit. Yeah, like, security guard, and it's don't like, yo, kids, don't man. listen. Like, they were turning even to cancel if you, Travis Scott. Up, even you know? if you can't come in, like, we're going to fucking just break down the barriers and come in. Like, right. so he's creating this kind of rebellious and like, kind of you know against the system thing but it's like it, it was like it was not working out it has it, it wasn't but, working out for that event because they it was just so chaotic and you know what but i mean then the irony of the whole thing is think like hey go against the system but like yo make sure y'all go broke buying these fucking shoes make sure y'all right. fucking fight each other for this shit make sure y'all fucking like whatever money you're making like that's what and i'm not saying like look if sneakers bring you joy then fucking by all means buy all the sneakers but Man, I, that that one hurt because I was watching people basically being like "fuck Travis Scott," and then I was watching people like "fuck all the security," and then people like "fuck Live Nation," and and I'm just like, man, like if everyone was just there to help lift each other up in that moment, maybe it could have been different, you know? Uh, do, do you think this? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Do you think this is gonna affect festivals? Nah, no, no. You don't think it's gonna affect it, you, it, the only person that's gonna affect is Travis Scott. You think? Yeah. Not even for I a think long it, time. I know, not even for dude. He's gonna. I don't know about he's, this he's, one. It, I think it's just gonna get bigger. Like to me, I'm look like I'm looking at it as a, like because he's set to drop an album soon. Yeah, he's, he just dropped a song fam, that Friday. I, he's not dropping anything anytime soon. Man. He's, <laughs> he's not. <laughs> I don't know. He just canceled Day in he, Vegas. Yeah, right? he's gonna lay low. Oh, he had, he had oh, he's, he's gonna lay low shit. for sure. Yeah. He but got, I don't think he's gone. Gone. I guess he was on Fortnite. You said and he got dropped. Yeah, his little Fortnite. emote or whatever. Oh, damn, he got, he got dropped for Fortnite. I, I mean, it's like a lawsuits are going in. Yeah. I mean, like yo, the, the, the fact that there's suits. these kids. Nike like, stopped the 14 year old There's a 9 year old In the hospital Yeah I just read it. Oh that. Nike stopped the release and Nike stopped the release Of his Air Force That was supposed to be taken That Air Max 1 on, I think on, yeah, yeah On Sunday So you had to be at the event In order to buy the fucking shoe Like the only thing That well, someone told me And it's like Everything's hearsay Is like Did he know that people Were dying and kept going And I don't think You know like That's hard to answer right Well you yeah. You you know You're a DJ for Wes Khalifa Who had a cult following mm -hmm. Did you guys ever Em some, some some shit like this Like where You know You guys were kind of Labeled at Yo don't bring that Hip hop shit over here Because it's a bunch of Weed smokers And they cause chaos And shit Um Yeah Like I'm saying like Yes People now, how, how, how did y'all handle that Well I think at the end of the day We just do a good show And no one fucking gets hurt And they're like Oh shit This shit wasn't cool You know It wasn't bad And you know When It's, it's sad to say But like Anywhere we went, like it, even like hotels, like it, hotels will give us problems just because like he's black, you know. So like, right. um, even I don't even know where I was going with that, but I mean the the thing is like there was there was an article in L.A. Times about the Travis Scott shit, and you know there's there's just it's just really bad because his whole career there's so many instances of him telling kids to like jump off of balconies into right. the crowd yeah. and like one kid was paralyzed he got right. pushed off of the balcony well, and it's just like did you, you know it's, there was a story about like his old engineer or something did you see this one was coming out did you see this video at all mm -hmm. it came out today this old engineer and this was actually a real story that came right. out 10 years ago that he his engineer was having a seizure and he just walked out and left and just left him there like to be had and so the producer was like that was me yes he walked out and it shows you how much he cares about people but like I'm not going to listen to anyone tell me how I should feel about that. But there you know. is a lack. To, like, the only one thing I was, will say about Travis Scott, and I've never, obviously, I've never met him and all of this shit, but I've, I've seen him like really shit on people and like DJs who, like, if a DJ fucks up, he just like embarrasses them and totally destroys them on really? stage. Yeah. Really? He's done that multiple fucking times to even DJs that I know. What happened? Like, yo, the, you're the fuck worst fucking DJ I've ever heard. Get the fuck off the stage. And, like, he'll tell the crowd, like, yo, everyone boo this DJ. Say, fuck the DJ. And, he, like, he'll just be, he's, like, notoriously up. known. Like, I think he was, like, he was performing somewhere. And he was, he was just, he had everything on 11. Right. So it sounded like shit. And the right. DJ was trying to turn down the master. Right. And fucking Travis smacked his hand. And it was, it was it's just been this attitude that that I can see that's kind of, like, a lack of empathy for anything or anywhere else besides him and the agenda that he has. And that's exactly what I was saying about right. DJing and hip hop and where it's gone is that like, it was cool to have Wu-Tang Clan and all these 
cool crews like crewing up together. But now it, that where what's the what's an R and B group? Name me a who got an R and B group right now. Everyone wants to be the center of the tension. Everyone wants to be the man, and everyone wants to be a brand and at me, bro. And no one wants to be a community. And that's that's what's happening, man. That's what's happening. I mean, it's all all of that. It's like oh, it's layers man. of that. I'm 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 just like I'm wondering where this is gonna go, because I feel like I mean, it's gonna get worse. Well, I think it's gonna get, get worse. worse. Well, who's been? I mean, I mean, actually, I wanted to ask y'all a question because that was a. Have you guys ever had a, a, a funny interaction with like an artist or a celebrity that may have requested something or like I something popped up in my head one time I was in DJing after party we were touring with ASAP and Wiz, and we were in the UK. And like at that time, like I didn't have a UK grime crate up, like you know what I'm saying, mm, like. Yeah, yeah. And I remember ASAP was at the party, and I was like playing cool American shit, and then he came up to me, he was like, "Yo, can you play some?" You know, I, I don't know. He might have said Stormzy or some some shit. Yeah, and right. I was like, uh, "I don't have it." And he like was fucking pissed. <laughs> and he was like, "You don't got that fucking shit." Up. I was like, "I don't know, man." Like. I don't I've had that with the dream. Oh <laughs> yeah, oh, <laughs> I talked about that before. <laughs> but I didn't know his music, and he got kind of pissed off. He's like talking shit on the microphones. Like, how, how you don't know? How you don't know my shit, man? Right. Some of the worst uh, when you're but dealing you didn't with art- know his shit. Yeah. It was like some of them. I, d- I didn't know all his songs. Like all the songs he produced at the time. Oh, bro, it's a bunch of shit. <laughs> no, at the time I was just like, like some Beyonce shit. I was like, like. Ah. I don't know. I don't have it. Jesus. <laughs> and it was it was like shit I had to play off the bat. It was just it wasn't planned. He was just like, yo, just play this, play that. I'm sure some Ooh. DJs out there have been through the like you had to rewind it, but you only had the intro version. I've been through oh, bring that. it back. Yeah, <laughs> like where like an artist or someone oh, yeah. like bring it back and I'll be like, Ugh. Wow. and then it's like <laughs> do 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 and you're just like, uh it's like that's not the top of the record. It's like it's all I have. Do 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 you know, you're just like fuck. And then it's still going to 16 bars and do 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 and you just like didn't Radio have, killer. Yeah, just yeah totally. totally. 16 bar intro. God damn. Yeah, well, that's why I like been on some like when I try to download. I'll, I think he made 16 count. Not 16 count. Eight yeah, bar, yeah, 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 yeah. Eight bar intro. Eight bar intro. 16, 16 bar. bar. <laughs> I was like, that's a long yeah, ass that's, time. That's bro. a whole minute. Well, for, for some of those fucking like trap joints, they yeah, have those super yeah. duper it's long so, versions. It feels like forever, bro. And I, I think it was like with Big Sean or someone it happened and I was just like, and he looked back he's like, I was like, uh, <laughs> it's nothing you could do. <laughs> Intro version, yeah. Fuck it, I would been like, <laughs> I don't know. Ass, I'm like, hey, ass, why don't you yeah. try talking some shit right. on the mic? Right, exactly. Tell exactly. me how you came up with this. Song. That's when you just it's like as many times as you can because you brought it back exactly. Oh like, yeah. How many sound effects? DJ Bonics. Let me put some dance hall lasers in here. Everything. Some gunshots. And you said like, damn, I still have another ten seconds. Oh, yeah, it gets it gets nerve wracking like an artist in there and shit. Like I'd rather just play with no, I don't care who's in there. Like, I, I, I like I I I like DJing for the artists. Right. Well, if you can get yeah. them to like, but I mean, it happens. I uh, never get to do it, but when I do get to do it, I really I really have fun okay. doing that shit. Yeah. You but, know what? Uh, like, actually, um, last weekend I DJ for Sway Lee. Okay. Oh. And all right, so his manager came up to me like ten minutes before he's supposed to get on with a jump drive, like four songs. Mm-hmm. So I put played the four songs. After I finished, he went to keep performing. Mm-hmm. So he wanted like certain songs, and I did have my laptop. But there was one song I didn't have. Mm. Um, Sunflower. You don't oh, have wow. a, how the fuck you don't have oh, Sunflower? I, had, I, was, I was on my. <laughs> he said Sunflower. Like it was like a newer laptop. So I, I had changed, put music in this. That's laptop. a newer song though. <laughs> that's not a new song. I mean, I mean that's I, his so biggest song. Twenty eighteen. I had a remix. I didn't have it. I'm like, oh my god. And I was like embarrassed. Uh-huh. Luckily, the like, the sound guy that was standing next to me. He had it on his phone. He was like, Yo, wait a minute. You didn't say pull it up and put it connected to the mixer and played the song. And I was just like, oh, oh, wow. yeah, You saved yeah. me. I was Damn. like, oh, man, thank you, man. Thank I, mean, you. I love that record. <laughs> it's kind of a big record. Yeah. yeah. I, I when was the last that. time you played that song? I, I played play that shit it. this weekend. Yeah, I play it. <laughs> yeah? Oh, yeah. You should play the, the movie. The movie really blew it up, right? Yeah. The Spider Man Spider Man movie. Yeah. What was it? Like Post Malone him? Yeah. Everyone sings that shit. I hated that song. Really? I didn't like it too much. It was, it was a good it, song. It was a cool That's song. It's a great song. It's one of those songs, not to though, play like, in a club. It's like, oh, man. You know, you're getting turned see, up to that shit. I'll be thinking about it too much. It'll be like, is my cool factor bad if I play it? Like, I, I, I have to remove I, that I from run that shit. Exactly. Exactly. Run that exactly. Shit. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. I need to just run this shit. But, you know, yeah. if I was like DJing and Wiz was there and like, yeah, I dropped Sunflower, Wiz, like, like, oh, boy. 
Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> what, you don't like this? Yeah, you know, like this. We actually toured. We toured with Ray Shrummer. They were cool guys. Uh, Sway Lee's dope. Sway Lee's really cool. Yeah, yeah, really he cool yeah. he's like, uh, he's like, there must have been so many girls at that it spot. Was that, yeah, bunch. It's it crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah. I seen. So we toured with them. Like it was our last tour we actually had two years ago, and someone um, threw their, you know. Kids will throw their phone on stage so that people will like take Think selfies selfie. mm-hmm. and fucking threw it and busted his fucking lip and shit. Oh crazy. wow! Oh, shit. And, and he was fucking pissed. He was in the crowd like "fuck you, I'm gonna sue you." And, da, da, da. and then he's they were they did the song while he had a bloody lip. It was cool though. <laughs> 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 it's a good, you know, good memory. Good memory. <laughs> oh man, yo, but any, yo, we have any other questions for Bonix? Nah, nah, yeah, we gotta bring him back. Yeah, I love to yeah. come back or just hang out. At, yeah, you know, if, yeah. Uh, if, if, uh, if uh, you know, <laughs> Jamie do don't it. show up again, I'll, I'll come, uh, come <laughs> hang out. <laughs> maybe our maybe our Christmas party. Right? Yeah, I was gonna yeah, say yeah, like we, come we, through for the uh, Christmas. Our Christmas recording. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll just come hang out, man. Yeah, look, he's gonna bring the toad. Here's the thing: I live here, so I need friends. And so, uh, <laughs> asking you guys to be my friends right now in front of everybody. Well, you're, you're a friend, Bonix. <laughs> right, thank, thank you. No, it's cool. Like, I'm starting to see. I don't know if I'm ready to be his friend. Uh, no, I'm ready to be his friend. <laughs> I have a lot of friends. We're gonna get really, really high, but we'll be well, I'm joking. Yeah. I gotta take. I gotta take one. Take one out. Who can I replace? No. Um, no, it's cool. It's cool nah, navigating nope. through this space because, like, people do respect what, like, you know, young guys are like, damn, I've been watching you growing up, and then my peers are like, we've been doing this together. And then, you know, knowing people that I've looked up to, like Mighty Mai and, you know, yeah, people yeah. like you, man. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, you were a pioneer, like, in the, from, you know, just from, and I hate to be, like, from an Asian dude standpoint and just from, like, East Coast guy and then coming out here. And then I remember one of the first things I heard about Crooked was, like, you don't play remixes or whatever, like, <laughs> early, you know. <laughs> Intros, you mean? Too. Early on. No, I mean, at that time, everyone did bashups yep, and, and remixes, he, yep. and I played all the originals. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, and so, like, you know, thank you, man. This is me giving you your no, flowers no, I mean, and everyone in here aw, aw, for nah. that. Because, uh, you know, you it, feel I feel you when you're saying, like, when you listen to me, like, this dude's full of shit. Like, no, nah, I do feel like I, I just have this compassion fucking No, but yeah, you're, sweater. you're not full of shit is what I'm, nah, I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. yeah. And it's well, I can a, see how and, other people would and like, ah, fuck this guy. It's not, you know, it's like, nah, man. I'm great cool. about peace no, no, and no, love no. Him, yeah. Yeah, Even, I mean, you know, that, that quote when I was reading it, you know, it really, that's I was like, quote. yeah, that's such a great quote. It's just, you know, and it, it, it really kind of, it's one of those things where you only have that like kind of when you've experienced and you've, you've had a certain time in your career and you've had ups and downs and you realize you make those mistakes where, you know, you ego, ego, like your ego gets in the way, totally. you know, and I've been there, you know, we've all, we've all been through that. That's why we can say now, like right. we have, to, you have to control your ego and you have to, like you said, you have to approach everything like a student right. and just continuously learn, you, so, you know, you don't so have many, everything figured out. There's been so many years that, and you can ask my really close friends this, where like every year for like the first seven or eight years touring with Wiz, I'll be like, is this the last, is this, I never like to speak about it. Like it's finite, right? Like I'm just like, is this the last, is this, this might be the last year. This might be the last year. So <laughs> there were a lot of times in my career where I used to bitch about the situation when, but it was really how I felt about myself. Mm. So just, just keep that in mind. Like there were times where business wasn't good or like, where I might have felt like Wiz wasn't, or like the situation wasn't good, but it usually was how I felt about myself, right? Mm. So even if I wasn't, even if business wasn't good, that doesn't mean that I'm a bad person. It's just business, you know? Wiz right. has a line where it says, there's no friends in business. And like, when you really take that and think about it, like, yeah, look, Wiz might make a decision one day, hey, it's not working out for me, but if I'm like, fuck him for that shit, da, 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 like, that's the reaction, the response I'm saying. Right. So well, the one thing I want to say one more time before I leave is like really recognizing that if you can experience something joyful, then you can experience within the yin and yang, you can experience the exact opposite from that. Right. So when you're in a good place and you recognize that you could it could be shitty, then that's gratefulness. But more importantly, when we're in this low place and we get through this with DJing, like a lot of people last year, their whole lives turn upside down. Mm-hmm. Remember that is just like your debt to the blessings, man. Like that's how I like remind myself. Like I'm not gonna have night and without day. Like I'm not gonna know that unless I experience these things. So exactly. don't avoid, like you said, don't avoid these hardships. Like people, you might miss an opportunity because you're afraid to offend someone or you're afraid to like really take a chance. No risk, no reward. And so that's why I want to be. I don't want to tell people how to live their life anymore. Like I just want to try to be an example of. Well, you know. Someone said to me yesterday, like, dude, I admire that you just, like, pick up and move, and that's, like, hard to do. And I'm here in Vegas. 
in a place where there's a million fucking great DJs and so many talented people. Is there space for me? I don't know, but I just carved my own lane, which was like going through it with the weed thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and then DJing is just a byproduct because, like, people can trust me as a DJ, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, man, I'm just thankful to be here, thankful to be on the podcast. No, what thanks, thanks for you guys. You know, it's great, man. Well, welcome yeah. to Vegas. Thank and you. And then, like, thank yo, you. thanks for coming through, man. Yeah, so. I'm glad, I'm glad we finally got you on. No, perfect. I love yeah. to just uh, be around and uh, check all y'all out. Yeah. yeah. You know? I perfect. Agree. And yo, Bonix, thank you once Appreciate again for coming you, through, yeah, man. Follow me it. at DJ B O N I C S. If there you need go. weed in Las Vegas, <laughs> come see me at Hardeen. Sounds like right. That's well. the go-to spot right I mean, now. You know, I got my, my guys right here. Yep. Do you yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> the real weed smokers don't get shit over here. <laughs> you smoke weed? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> he's trying to get. He's, he's trying to get chose, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get down. <laughs> I got the D for my shit. I'm like, yo, what are you doing today? Let's go to Hardeen. He's one of those. Dude, you can give him a hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, give me the low cut. Yeah, he'd be I'd happy. Be no, fucking eighty five dollars. I mean, I'll wear the hat. Like I got just drafted him, number give one. Him the, give him like the eighty five dollars <laughs> sponsorship. Give me you know? the worst well, one you got, and I'll be happy. <laughs> give him an eight, eight, eight quarter. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> give me the eight. It's a little baby drink. We'll just give you a hat with the J on it. You don't get the rest. You don't get the rest. You don't get the rest of the letters. On that note, thank you. Peace. Thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. All right. If you want to watch more episodes from Rogue Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.